and welcome to another episode of Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, here on Dork Tales. I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly, I'm using he and him as my pronouns, and folks, tonight we are delving into the depths, well, it's a single floor dwelling, uh, but still, of Cragmaw Castle. We're finally making it here as a united party. Minus Christine, because uh, she finally caught my cold and is out of commission. And um, Christine, we hope you're feeling well. I can hear you cooking right now and trying not to pass out in the kitchen. So I hope you're doing well. Um, you are wonderful and we miss you. Uh, tonight, the role of Christine, uh, well, of Alessandra, is going to be covered by Chris. He's going to run the me mechanics because he's played a paladin many times. And uh, we're going to see how far we can get without her. But our thoughts are with you and we hope you feel better soon because this cold is a nightmare, folks. It even knocked out Critical Role, and if it knocks them out, th they actually get, like, really paid to show up. So, you know, instead of just, like, suggestively paid, you know, tipped to show up. Uh, but anyway, welcome to Fandelver and Below. We're going to be hopping into game in just a minute, but before we do, let's introduce everybody, starting with Caitlin. Whoa, hello, I am Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns, and so does Anthea Briarfoot, the Artificer, alchemist, halfling of the group. I did that wrong, but that's okay. You that's did the perfect. vibe. Let's go. Let's go. We're nothing without Christine. <laughs> ah. I know. Uh, speaking of people we love, because saying that she's nothing would be absolutely wrong. No, There's a speaking goal. of people who are nothing without Christine. Oh, that's hi. how it should go. Hello, Amy. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm here. I'm present. I made it, despite some costuming snafus that we are just not going to talk about. But I'm here and present and my pronouns are she her they them i am amy and i'm playing lyric the bard tiefling college of creation beautiful Uses she we love we love a good lyric uh and other things we love krista oh hi hello i love you too uh i'm krista i use she they or her them pronouns uh, and i am playing carmilla alazarin who uses she her pronouns uh, and is our dampier fighter not a champion fighter She's the other one. The other one? Battlemaster. That's the Battle one. Battlemaster. <laughs> I got there. God, one of these days I'm going to play a fighter. Um, all right. Other things I want to play. Chris. Good evening. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Hi, I'm Chris. I... Don't steal my shtick. That's my <laughs> shtick. <laughs> but what a century was now a vampire. Ha, ha. Uh... <laughs> it could be. We'd ask how he became a vampire. You <laughs> <laughs> play a card <laughs> and become a vampire. I don't <laughs> suck. <laughs> Sindri is the way of the ascendant uh, dragon half elf monk, and I he uses he or him pronouns. I use the, he or they pronouns, and I'm also playing Lady Alessandra Beraquel. I'm not remembering her middle names because that's not my job. Uh, <laughs> she, she's only played by Christine. Uh, I have them she, written down. Uh, I oh, oh, line line. line. <laughs> um, she is our oath of the watchers ace of our paladin. And wow, you remember friend. that? Oh yeah. I was also looking directly at her character sheet. That's fair. Uh, so, folks, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to play this as uh, Lady Beraquel is going to be in, like, mission mode. You know, she's basically going to be in Steve Rogers mission mode. No time to talk. No time to quip. Just business time. Yes, Krista. Uh, Alessandra Celeste Martine Beraquel. Ah, yes, because Christine is in the chat right now while she's eating dinner before she goes back to sleep. Uh so, hope you're feeling better. We're going to have a great time tonight, and we're going to see how far we get inside of Craig Maw Castle. But we could not get anywhere without our sponsor for the night, Bookworm Games. Bookworm Games is you. Yes, you. Your place to go for the best dice on the internet. You can get them at 15% off with code DORKTALES. Hell, we even have some examples right now that we could hold up. I have this fantastic... Woo. Oh god, that almost destroyed my keyboard. It's very, very thick, very, very metal. It is my Farah Gold Dragon set. Krista also has some spooky, smoky D20s that were given to them by Raven with Baubles and a Swirly Dice, which is being eaten by their green screens, but still is amazing. You can get tons of dice. Resin dice, liquid core dice, metal dice, wood dice, and more over at bookwormgames.com. They're a great company, and I really strongly suggest you support them because they support us. Go use code DORKTALES to save 15% off your purchases, and if you are buying 100 Canadian, which is like 73 US, I think, right now, uh, don't hold me to that. I'm not a currency exchange or a cop. I'm just a streamer. Um, 
you will get free shipping, which is fantastic. Uh, go ahead and do it. You even get edible dice, which are pretty great. They also have a number of other things like familiars. Uh, they've got tea. They're working on coffee. Get some. Book Room Games today. Thanks to the Book Room Games for sponsoring us. And uh, a big thank you to all of you for being here. Uh, a couple of quick announcements before we begin. Um, this week is the beginning of Vampire the Masquerade Transylvania by Night. It airs on Wednesday night at 7 p.m., the first in an 800-year-long, or plus, actually, because the game might go past when the modules go, uh, at least 800 years of darkness. Uh, join us on that for on Wednesday night for a fantastic cast crew and a lot of fun. Beyond that, tomorrow night is what was supposed to be the return of Shards of Nern, uh, but with Christine under the weather, I don't want to start a new season without her, so we're going to figure something else out to do tomorrow night. It might be uh, an intermission game. It might be a Baldur's Gate playthrough as we continue my dark urge. Um, we will figure it out and we'll let you know as soon as possible. But beyond that, this weekend, we also have the triumphant return of Mage the Ascension, the Victorian Age, book three, uh, provided that, uh, that everybody is not dead from this super cold. And on Sunday, we have the return for sure of Planescape, Turn of Fortune's Wheel. I'm very excited to be getting back into that. We also have a ton of additional stuff. Alien Destroyer of Worlds has its first episode up on Patreon right now. The other two episodes are just waiting to get posted. And uh, we're going to be recording more of that. Hunter and Old Gods of Appalachia in the near future. So, take a look at our Patreon if you haven't already. It's a great way to support the channel and get a ton of additional content, including a podcast with Chris that I just recorded like two days ago where we spoil the ending of The Blacklist, talk about horror movies, and football? Rugby. We talk about rugby. Yeah, which is good. We, I, we talk a lot. We, we talked talk a lot. Like, many things were said. Many things were said. It still true? wasn't as much. Oh, the, well. the, most, the most talking award goes to me and Krista, where we talked for two and a half hours straight, and I had to make it into two different podcasts. So, Krista, Amazing. if you want to record another podcast anytime soon, you want to just flirt for like three you, hours you again? Finally, you've run out. <laughs> I could never run out on you or of you. Oh, yeah. What I up? bought in bulk. I got you at the Costco. <laughs> I got one pallet of Krista. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, uh, folks, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fandelver and Below. Uh, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything before we start? All right. My face is very itchy. I'm sorry. I would scratch it, but you're on a different landmass. I think I have all my dice here, and I will not touch Christine's because I do not want to curse them. That's fair. That's fair. Um, all right. And uh, before we begin, um, Amy, I'm going to be starting off with you tonight and explain what happened to you last session. So, last episode, let's go ahead and hop in. Last episode, you all made your way back to Phandalin. From that old watchtower, an old owl well. Once you were back in Phandalin, you had a celebratory dinner, a wonderful time, sold a bunch of merchandise, and were even able to get Lady Alessandra's armor fixed in time. It was honestly a really good, relaxing come down from the surge of adventures that you'd had. However, Lyric, as the rest of your friends were enjoying themselves and going around shopping, you found yourself becoming somewhat distracted. The entire way back, you couldn't stop thinking about a song. It started the moment that you opened your eyes, and maybe even before. As you slept through the night at Old Owl Well, something wormed its way into your mind. And the whole way back, and the whole day and night, all you could do was hear the sound of a little tune in your head. It kept looping and looping. A ballad. <laughs> and you found yourself humming it all day all night and I'd like you to make me a constitution saving throw constitution yes please okay 
en tout cas. That's going to be an eight. An eight. Fantastic. Uh, as you awaken the next day, you will find that you did so at your desk inside of the small inn room that you rented from Toblin. You don't remember sleeping. You don't remember most of the last day. It comes in a blur. But you're sitting at the desk, a quill in your hand, your fingers stained with ink. You're going to start the day with a level of exhaustion. And as you look down, you can see flowing script. Can you make me an insight roll? And that's an 18. Perfect. You don't recognize the handwriting. It looks similar to yours. But the loops, the little tells that give away a signature, that give away the script and flow of someone's pen, are not yours. Do you read the lyrics, Lyric? Most definitely. As you do, you'll hear the following inside of your head hum to you. In the depths of fiery pits, where demons dwell, a tale unfolds of the daughter of hell. Born in the shadows with heart aflame, she ruled her domain with sinister name. Her eyes glowed with the fires of the abyss, a queen of torment, a ruler in bliss. Her throne of bones adorned with despair in the infernal realm. That was her lair. It goes on, but the second page is smeared. Do you flip through the pages? Yep. The further down you go, the more erratic it is. The words are scattered around the pages, wings of darkness, demon princess. Her laughter echoed. Her power swelled. They're spread out across the pages. You're not sure where the lyrics go. Secret desire, ascend from hell. And then as you flip to the third and fourth piece of paper, you will see, I agree, I agree, I agree, I consent, I consent, I give my blessing. Words of consent and acquiescence scrolled across the page, dozens upon dozens of time deep, the ink burning through the parchment. And at the bottom of it, your signature, broad and flowing, as large as your hand, and that is in your writing. And as you touch the page there, you'll realize that, unlike the rest of the paper, that is not written in ink. And you will notice a sore on the tip of your weak hand's thumb. A little cleft about the size of a pea. Where it looks like you nicked yourself with a penknife. It's red and sore. What do you do? Try not to panic. And 
Am I? Is this? Uh, am I alone in this room? This is just where we have all our in independent rooms. I believe you did have all independent rooms. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, kind of going to. Sort of that like scrambling, like gathering all the papers together and just rolling them up and shoving them in her bag. Okay. Sounds good. And I think when she's done that, is sort of just going to stand there for a moment, kind of staring like at the empty, the, the clear desk. And then we'll just. go downstairs to go meet everyone. Okay. The rest of you, when Lyric heads downstairs, she appears somewhat exhausted because she is. Big, big bags rest under her eyes. And the day goes as we remember it going. You all went to the forge. You acquired the armor uh, that you had managed to acquire from... Uh, uh, what was her name? Maza. Uh, Maza sent you on your way. And with that, you proceeded to the north, toward Cragmaw Castle. Your horses made quick work of it. It was maybe a, a six-hour ride. When you reach the edge of the castle grounds, it's in early afternoon. This keep in front of you, this castle, is barely anything like that. It's old, and not of goblin construction. The fact that it's buried inside of the woods long forgotten says how much about its age. It was placed there long enough ago that the trees had time to spread around it, obscuring it from view. But as you approach, riding at a distance, careful not to get too close, I imagine, it springs out of the woods in such a way that you're surprised that more people didn't know its location. But then again, it's not particularly large, perhaps 150 feet wide by perhaps another hundred feet. Its battlements are not particularly tall, and most of them are crumbled. There are seven crumbling towers of, distant, of different sizes and heights, but the upper stories are all in various states of collapse. A short flight of steps facing to the west appears to be the main point of egress. It leads to a terrace in front of the main entryway. Past the wreckage of a pair of sundered doors lies a shadowed hall. A quick ride around the building will reveal that there is a collapsed portion, well, two, actually, at the north, as well as another door likely to servants' quarters or just a side entryway to the south. As you're standing on the edge of the woods, your horses are going to grind their hooves into the wet loam. What do you do? Lady Carmilla. Hmm. I'm presuming, but you were raised in a castle, right? Well, yes, a functional one, not one quite quite so decrepit were you introduced to anything about siege warfare or how to best get in or out or what are your thoughts on that because i have much knowledge of how to withstand an uprising uh carmilla will start looking at the battlements and see if there is any sign of people manning said battlements what i want you to do is go ahead and make me what would you roll for this you think 
Perception? I think history. History? That works yeah. for me. Make me a history yeah. roll. Or, or, or perception's fine, too, if that makes more sense. Because I guess it is more like I'm looking for people in the battlements, but history might help me look where I should be looking. Use your better pool for this. Okay. Um, and before we begin, history. everyone does have their determination tagged right now. Awesome. Uh, uh, oh, that's not bad. That'll be an 18. For 18. So looking around, you can see that this place is in shambles. It's not goblin architecture, likely human, maybe with some dwarven accents around the side, but it's honestly a fireball would probably cause one of those towers to collapse, which probably isn't a good thing uh, if you're looking to rescue anyone from it. The building looks like it's mostly flagstone probably built directly on top of earth given the way that the architecture strikes you you doubt that there's any type of cellar or dungeon to speak of and if there is it's probably only fitting for goblins however taking a look at it you're going to notice that on many of the outside walls there are arrow slits 10 feet above the ground and four feet um, above the um the platform that the front steps lead up to. So likely about about chest high on any normal person. And there are quite a few of them. If you want to sneak up, you probably want to get close to the building as quickly as possible and watch for those slits. It'd be impossible to tell whether or not someone is inside without a very fortuitous roll or perhaps staking the place out for a bit. Um... Perhaps we should sit and watch for movement for a few moments before moving. Oh, okay. I vow to your judgment here. I, th I was gonna—I was thinking we should wait for night, but I think that would put the goblins at a better advantage than us. I, yes, I, I believe you're right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're going to sit at the tree line, I guess. Mm. Um Carmilla will offer to step forward as it is kind of known now that she can be deathly still. Uh, so um, uh, I will stand at the edge, you holding back. Um, and she'll <laughs> kind of move up closely, like close to the edge of the trees without trying to like step out, but then just kind of stand perfectly still and just watch for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. Sounds good. As you're doing that, I do want to say as well that this is very fortunate. This was built so long ago that the defensive tree line that would have been hewn away from the forest in order to keep a vantage point around this castle barely exists. In fact, some of the smaller trees go as close as 20 or 30 feet away from some of the walls. Now, they're only 10 to 30 feet tall trees, but hey generations of neglect are your advantage in the stealth. Uh, what I would like you to do is make me a perception roll with advantage and anybody else who is scouting it out um, who is staying a bit further back, make me a flat roll. And feel free to roll for um, for our dear lady Alessandra. I'm sorry, it was perception you said? It was. Okay, uh, 18. 18? Got a yeah. 19 flat. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I got a 15 on Sindri. Um, I don't know if Lady Alessandra's skills are on this sheet. I uh, we'll assume that she's she's not. Just roll me a d20. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Not 20? No. Five. Chris rolls. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Oh, yes, Chris rolls. I was going to say, holy crap. <laughs> All right. And Lyric. Lyric is going to be standing back and is letting them handle this because she is a little uh, rattled still. Sounds good. Now, I do want to tell you as well, if you ever want to try to piece together the rest of the song, you could try to go through that making some intelligence rolls later. Yeah, okay. Sounds okay. good. Sounds good. I have the song set aside for you. Um, taking a look at the place, um, Cindy, you're going to notice a, something um, that everyone else is going to notice, and that is that there 
are no lights inside of this place. Now, there are places as you kind of look around from the shadows that you can see there are shafts of light jutting down through broken rooftops, broken towers, and bits of cracked stone. They definitely will have an advantage there if you wait till night, unless you bring in some dark vision, which most of you have, one of you doesn't. Um, however, Carmilla and Thea, both of you are going to notice that as you are staring there, next to the front entryway, a pair of green heads are going to be visible right at the end of your waiting time. It looks like a pair of goblins. You almost couldn't see them, given how short they are. But likely there's some box or something positioned behind them, because sure enough, at the end of that 10 minutes, right when you're about to give up, you will see a knobby green head suddenly jostle up like it's taking a step up a stairwell. You'll see that there is one next to the southern murder hole and one <laughs> next to the northern one at the front entrance. However, very quickly, they wander off. Do you think they're changing the guard? Oh, well, best case scenario, they are, they are the only guards and now is a oh. good time to go. Oh. Shall we? Okay. I guess. Oh. <laughs> Wave at everybody. <laughs> Go. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to make a run for the door if everyone's cool with that. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Not, yell not yelling, much, but like, <laughs> yes. out of yeah. here. No. Let's go. All right, sounds good. Can I get a stealth roll off of everyone? Oh, boy. With disadvantage because oh, I'm wearing chains. So oh, that's boys. disadvantage, I believe. Oh, oh boys. Well, since we got 23. Okay, well, that's, that's good. good. He is the knight. Uh, and I rolled a 1 and a 7 for uh, Lady Alessandra. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, no. That is a 7 for me. Oh, no. Oh, that's no. Such a disadvantage. Uh, that one of these was a 20. Damn it. Uh, you know what? Don't worry about it. <sighs> Yeah, I've got 11. <laughs> so that's a botch with Lady Alessandra. Uh-huh. I Let's have a... Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Starting strong. <laughs> starting strong. I love it. All right. So, as you are rushing up to the front, you're keeping yourselves pretty flush with the wall, um, or at least you're trying to make your way up that center center route, uh, but as you do, Lady Alessandra is not used to her new armor, and as she takes a step forward, her sword is going to slip, and the scabbard is going to let out a loud clang against the side of her armor as she looks down and looks back at you all with just a white face. Uh, as that occurs, uh, I would like an initiative roll, please. <laughs> You're going to hear from the inside. Briak! Briak! All right. So, what do I got? I've got. Oh boy. I've got many. Okay. So, 16, 15. Great rolls, guys. Oh Very boy. Well, <laughs> one dice going in the time mode already for the betrayals. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> so, oh boy. I calculated her uh, dexterity modifier using my keen powers of intuition, and I know it's a plus zero. Mm -hmm. So it's not another botch, but... Well, that's good. This is the universe being like, oh yes, we can finally roll bad! And just for a reminder in the chat, this is how we're rolling before the something bad, uh, hurt the more happens. There's Listen, no about this, this is more. just me. This is like rolling for someone else. Uh, yeah, man. it's like, like the cur <laughs> the curse is active. Fuck, there's so many goblins. <laughs> there's just like a couple. All right, so like three killed us. Okay, 
<laughs> yeah, level We're one. We're scared. We have trauma. All right, just do an initiative, everybody. All right, perfect. All right, at the top of this, uh, you are going to hear the sound of a goblin screaming Briark and is going to take aim at you and uh, is going to make two attack rolls uh, at uh, Carmilla. You were leading the charge, right? Yep. Okay, uh, one of them is going to by the side of your head, but the other is going to plant itself directly in uh, the side of your arm, dealing six points of piercing damage. Bugger. Another, another you is my going... new AC of 18? Uh, that was a 22. Okay, then yes. <laughs> uh, two more are going to fire um, at, uh, let's see, Sindri is right behind your back, uh, is going to fire at Sindri. Uh, Sindri, that is going to be a nat one, uh, and is going to be a, an 11. Those are both going to miss. Uh, you are going to hear the sound of a bowstring snap on the inside of that window as one of them loses access to their bow. Uh, and the last one is going to fire one shot at Carmilla. The dice is gone forever. Uh, that is going to be a... That's going to be a miss, actually, from the angle that you are at from that one that is shooting. The murder slit is going to give you a slight bonus to your AC. So murder one of the ones fires from the... I'm sorry? I said murder slit is worse. Murder slit is worse? <laughs> That's what they're called! And murder hole. Murder hole? They're murder all bad! I mean, they're all bad. Fine, arrow slit. Really I bad. lived in a house with a basement <laughs> that we called the murder hole because it looked like it. you had ritualistic sacrifices in there. Oh yeah, I had there were creepy too. children's that? drawings. Okay, What's like that about college. Oh, remind me on the break. I'll tell you about the worst one. Uh, and um, Lady Alessandra, a bolt is going to fire at her, and uh, from the north, that is. Uh, what is Lady Alessandra's armor now? Twenty-one. It's pretty freaking high. I think it's twenty. Okay, that is going to be a miss. Okay, Sindri, you are up. What do you do? Uh, I'm gonna kind of sarcastically to myself say, Briark, Briark. Oh, I'm so sick of this shit. And uh, use dash action. Okay. Um, so I get to move uh, twice my movement. So that's 80 feet this round. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can move diagonally. Shit. One, two. Can I move up the stairs as a. You absolutely can. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, so I move in here. Um, can I okay. guess to, to, like, I know that, are there, like, obvious doors leading to where the murder There are like, obvious you? doors to the north and the south. So uh, 35, 40, that's half my movement. 35, open door is my use object. Okay. And I, I gotta, again, Briark, Briark, and then try and kick one of them in the face. All right, sounds good. Make me an attack roll. Uh, okay. Well, that is a twenty-four to hit. Oh, that is absolutely going to hit this goblin boss. Or so, uh, cutlass attack. So, uh, perfect. Uh, that is eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. Beautiful. He's still up. And then I'm going to go for the the snap kick there. Uh, that's only a nine. Or no. Hold on, hold on, wait. That's not how math works. Um, that would be 11, and then I could use probably, armor class is probably higher than 13. Uh, so I'm gonna hold off on. Okay, on using so my... a total of eight damage though, right? Yeah. Okay. This has never backfired for me ever before. So why would it now? Just charging into the fray? Fair. All right, so down the initiative, we have Anthea. Sindri rushes into the main area yeah. and you can hear the sound of combat on the inside. Oh, oh gosh. Um, okay. Um, would I be able to try to toss a vial of fairy fire through the arrow? You can, slit? you can absolutely. Okay. Um, it, it, because it is not a direct attack, it's an area effect. All you have to do is be able to see inside. So you will throw yeah. it through. Are you throwing Let it to the north see. or the south? Um, 
thing. You know what? I'm going to throw it through the north, wherever combat's coming from. Okay, sounds good. Uh, all right, make a, make a deck save, I believe it is, uh, Sindri. And what's my saving difficulty? Seven... No, 13. 15. <laughs> so I, is it only 13? What's oh, your yeah. intelligence mod? Plus five. Are you adding your proficiency? So you... Was I supposed to? Yeah. Uh, yes. No, I yeah, was so not. It's 15. So it's 15. Okay. Guess what? I made it. Yay! 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 I had faith a, in you. It's a deck save, right? It's a deck save, yeah. Okay. Uh, one of those goblins will, but the one directly in front of Sindri that has not been injured <laughs> is going to suddenly start glowing as a just plume. A plume it's gonna be... of... Uh, what color? Yeah. Salmon. salmon. I was going to say green, but they're already green, so I would choose my salmon color. All right. Um, that is going to be good. Um, okay, that one is completely covered. Um, anything else that you're doing, Anthea? Are you moving at all? Perfect. Um, taking cover, question mark, ish. Sure. You can take cover like up against the side of the building. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. Uh, okay, are you five, going up 10, the stairs 15, or are 20, you going around the side? Probably the next to the 25. Building. Perfect. You have full it's cover unless. <laughs> Except from that Is slip. That... That's the... That slip might get you. Yeah. Well, there's two of them, so you know what? This is where I heard the kerfuffle coming from, so. All right. Um, so, as. <laughs> you do that. One of them is going, one of the goblins is going to rush out into the main hallway and start shouting. <laughs> We're under attack! We're under attack! And is going to turn and look at you advancing up the stairs and is going to loose two arrows at Carmilla. Both of which are going to shatter off of your armor. Ah, shit! One of them will say in Goblin if anyone speaks uh, it. Carmilla, Carmilla definitely looks over her shoulder to uh, to Alessandra and kind of winks. <laughs> Glad it's working for you. Or something. You know what she'd sound like. It's like that. I feel, right. like, I feel like we're at awkward smile stage. No words, just... <laughs> um, all right, Carmilla, you're up. Okie dokie. Uh, how high is this wall in front of me? Uh, it is just five feet. Oh, okay. Are you Less talking exciting. about the, the stairwell in front of you? Uh, yeah. So like I'm right up against the sheer without mm -hmm. the stairs. Uh, I would like to walk up it because I can, without hands, walk up. Sure. I'll let you, I'll let you just walk move. On I'll let you now. count it Treat as it a, five. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, in that case, I think I am going to go... Uh, this some bitch made it real easy for me. I'm going to go for him. All right, go um, ahead. She is going to somewhat disappear as she kind of folds backwards and then, like, like a vampire coming out of their coffin, steps up over the corner as she draws her sword and just runs at this guy. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to swing. Um, Give it to me. I'm just also deciding. I guess I can do it after if I hit or not. Um, mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Uh, I will use my long sword. Uh, oh, that's going to be a 17. Uh, 17 is more than enough to hit. Go ahead and roll me damage. Fantastic. Uh, so I am going to use a superiority dice, I think. Um, Sounds good. I think what I'm going to do, uh, Chris, you're playing Alessandra. Um, I'm going to use my maneuvering attack so that you can use a reaction to move her movement. Does that wor okay. work for you? Okay. Uh, in that case, the damage is going to be... It's a D8, right? Yep. Yeah. And a D8. So that is a 7 and a 3 plus 3. Three is 13. 13 damage. 13 damage? Okay. This is... 
All right, 13 damage. Uh, you are going to slam into this one, um, cleaving through the side of his collarbone. He is still up. Oh, son of a bitch. What do you do? Uh, so in, I'm, in you, I'm not going to use my Alexandra action surge this early. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm. that's my turn then. Okay, and Anthea, I'm assuming your ooze has traveled up with you and is also crouched against the side of the Oh, the wall. Squish, there you are. Squish. <laughs> yeah, I just I was like, oh yeah, I've got my ooze. I was like, hey, I thought I could do a bonus action. All right. So, uh, Carmilla, you have have whacked this goblin, but good. Uh, Lyric, it is your turn. What do you do? Oh boy. Uh, Lyric is going to move up onto the porch area, I suppose, the front okay. entrance, mm -hmm. and is going to aim for the one that you two are, that Carmilla and Alessandra are attacking, and is going to shoot it with her crossbow. All right, make me an attack roll. E. Uh, does a uh, that's it? Uh, does a sixteen hit? Uh, sixteen. Uh, just letting everybody know. Reminder: you all have determination. No, that sounds like a great time to use my determination. Does it? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that hits. What do you know? Cool. Oh, crazy. Watch it be like fifteen or like sixteen exactly, and I just wasted <laughs> it or something. Yeah, that sounds uh -huh. like something I would do. Um, all right, roll me damage. <laughs> uh, oh, and that's actually kind of decent damage. That's great. Uh, that is going to be a whole uh, ten piercing. Ten piercing. Oh, How do you do it? Because yeah, um, I think it's just gonna yeah. skewer them right in the side of the head. All right. Uh, I'm just like, Ooh. it yells, we're under attack! Yeah. And just falls down, near silent Shh. on the ground. All right. And then I'm going to toss a bardic ex uh, inspiration to, let's see who's right in front of me. Uh, Carmilla. All right. Sounds good. Uh, it is Lady Alessandra's turn. Lady Alessandra, uh, what is your goal now, Chris, as Lady Alessandra? So my goal is to uh, control space as best I can here. Okay. Uh, that's what a Lady Alessandra likes to do. Um, can I see into past the piles of rubble to the southeast of me? So looking into there, what you're going to be able to see is the western portion of this uh, hall ends in a wall of rubble, but the remainder looks... Um, so that is a... No, you actually cannot. Uh, that wall okay. of rubble does go straight up to the roof. Okay, great. In that case, I think she'll start making her way down to uh, the bottom corner to like get the goblins with the bow to get rid of the rest of the guards. Okay, sounds um, good. That you seems can, like something that she would do. You can easily make it inside of the lower murder room. Yeah, that's what. Uh, that's the plan. So open, okay. oh, open door, step through. There's okay. one, one, one friend in here. There's one friend in there. All right, so she'll try and dispatch them. Sounds good. Um, let's go with her stats here and make a melee attack. Uh, does a 20 hit? A 20 absolutely hits. Roll me damage. Uh, what is her? She uses a longsword? She uses a longsword, yes. So she's okay. at, uh, uh D8. she's using a shield, so it's a D8. So D8 plus five, plus, I believe? Uh, plus three. Oh, okay. Additional plus one if using hue, so... Okay. Oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, that's four damage. Four damage? So she's like running in to get a little uh, and just kind of like doesn't have time to really get into a full like setup stance. But having like got into the space, uh, she'll set herself up and use her bonus action to use Tunnel Fighter. Okay, sounds good. She is in Tunnel uh, Fighter mode. She does not need to use her reaction to make attacks. So even though she used her reaction to move. Okay, so, so um, as that occurs, um, the sound of the alarm is going to rouse suspicion from one of the goblins to the south, which means that one of them is going to rush up, meaning that will trigger uh, if she wants to spend her reaction to attack this one as it moves into her space. Uh, okay, because uh, it, res it resets, right? 
Yes. Yeah. So in that case, I'll be, I'll use that opportunity. Um, math is really hard here. That's okay. Uh, so some uh, twelve plus. I, I yeah, could do. Hit. Okay. Tw yeah. The twelve total. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was only a twelve total. Yeah. Okay. I, that's, I was trying to figure out if I was going to use determination or not. So uh, mm. I will not actually. A uh, twelve will not actually be enough. Yeah. Sorry. So that's fine. Okay, so this one steps into the way and sees what is going on, is going to make an attack on Lady Alessandra. That is actually going to be a hit from this little basic bitch goblin. Uh, he is going to lash out and strike her in the side for five points of slashing damage. She, she takes it stoically and just kind of like resets her shield up. Okay, some of the other goblins to the south are going to try to make their way through to attack Lady Alessandra, but they don't have a straight line of attack, so instead they're going to push through to go attack Carmilla, which turns out to be a bad mistake for them. Uh, so, uh, two of them are going to push through. Give me two tunnel fighter attacks, please. So the first one misses, but the second one's a crit. Okay, uh, uh, roll yeah. me double damage, please. Yeah, uh, and so... who is getting your inspirational crit? Uh, it's gonna go to Carmilla. Perfect. Uh, my rolls have been just absolute dog water today. So it is still gonna only be eight damage. Uh, that is enough. Uh, does this one run by and just it just get beheaded? Yeah, absolutely. He like, body keeps running, head falls off. Uh, so inspiration to Carmilla because she's next in, next in line to see the goblins. All right. Sounds good. Top of the initiative. Uh, there's going to be some noise coming from one of the northern rooms uh, as it sounds like some others are mobilizing, but that's going to take them a moment to get here. Uh, the first goblin that is next to Alessandra is going to drop its bow and is going to make two attacks uh, with a short sword, neither of which are going to be able to hit. Uh, it draw, pardon me, a scimitar. Uh, it draws its scimitar, makes two different attacks. I have a 17 and an 18, neither of which are going to hit. Uh, it is going to snarl and then take the, uh, is going to take the, uh, you can't hide, you're right in front of me. So, uh, the disin, yeah, there's no reason to do any of it, to be honest. He can't go anywhere. Um, all right. Uh, that is going to be him. Up at the top, uh, one of them, the second boss goblin, is going to drop his broken bow, Sindri, and is going to make two strikes against you. Uh, that's going to be a 16 and a 7. My armor class is 17. All right. Uh, two scimitar blows lash out and you definitely parry them with your own. Uh, and the one to your south that is covered in fairy fire is going to sneeze and make two attacks against you. Uh, one of which is going to nick the side of your arm, uh, dealing not terribly much damage. A, ooh, never mind, I lied. Uh, seven points of damage. Uh, however, would you like to get an opportunity attack? Oh, I love opportunity attacks. Uh, because he lashes through you, and as he does, uh, he is going to bury the edge of his scimitar in some of the ancient brickwork of the wall. Does he have advantage on the opportunity attack? And you have an advantage on the opportunity attack because he is the fairy fire one. All right, so that is a 15 to hit. I'm going to spend my determination to make it a 17. That is a hit. All right, let's do it. Uh, take seven points of damage. <laughs> Perfect. Seven points of damage uh, are going to slam into this one. A deep rent appears in the side of his face as you cut him from eye to chin. Some of his teeth clatter on the floor. It is your turn. Yeah, start by using patient defense. Kind of okay. settle into a slow pattern. Uh, use my uh, <laughs> use my object interact to close the door. <laughs> okay. And then uh, lay into the goblin uh, that's like enchanted with fairy fire. All right. Make me an attack roll advantage. So that is a 23 to hit. That is a hit. Uh, and that's five points of damage. Five points of damage. Cool. Are you making a second attack with your yeah, section? Use, use martial arts. Martial arts. Remember, it has advantage too. Uh, 15. 15, you just got your determination bot back. I will use my determination. Hey, that's a hit. Roll me damage. 
Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to kick him square in the chest. Perfect. Uh, and do six points of damage. Six points of damage. This guy is really worse for wear. Glowing with salmon-colored light, you you slash him again, and then your foot slams him back against the brickwork behind him, or the old stonework, and you're going to hear the sound of many bones cracking. All right. That is uh, your turn, unless you do anything else? That is all my actions, and I guess my reaction has reset now. It has. Okay, so yeah, I will. I'm holding on to my reaction then. Sounds good to me, Anthea. Okay, I am going to make a light crossbow shot at the one that um, Carmilla is fighting. All right, I think I sounds. Can. You absolutely can. Okay. Uh, yeah, do that. Boom. Whoa. Okay, that's going to be a dirty 20 to hit. Roll me damage. All right. I should use the correct die. Oh, nice. Uh, 10 damage. 10 Pierce. damage? How do you do it? Yeah. Carmilla, this, this one like surges at Carmilla with its blade drawn going, Briak! And it's going to go like in its throat. It clutches it at the, the wall. Oh, oh no, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's better. It clutches at it as it gets yeah. pinned to the to the back of the wall, gurbling as its blackish red blood bubbles out between its fingers. Uh that <gasps> is gonna be good for you. And then it is uh Oh wait, I have a bonus action. Oh do you? Nice. Yeah. Um I do? want I want Squish to kind of go forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. Go go get him. And go through the hole and patoo at um the goblin guy. You know what? Squish is actually small enough that he can do that. If you're talking about yeah. the northern one, yeah, the northern one. Okay, um, you can easily see which one are you aiming at? The the fairy fired one. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, so this is okay. Or the other one. Mm, so I will give you um, I will give you advantage on both rolls. Technically, you're within five feet, and it's a ranged attack against the one that's fairy fired. But Ooh. he also doesn't know you're there and isn't expecting you. So I know you really shouldn't double up on advantage. But this is a tiny little ooze that's spitting force magic. I think I'm going to give you the advantage. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, let's go. It's not a whole lot of force damage, but gotcha. Um, that's gonna be. <laughs> can I? <laughs> you can spend your determination on that. <laughs> What'd you roll? Did you roll with advantage? Um, I did roll with advantage. Oh, no. I still only rolled a thirteen. And I'm just oh. looking. I know. Um. Oh, I just. Oh, there it is. My spell attack modifier to hit. Oh, my spell attack modifier to hit. Yeah, that's a plus a five. Oh, that's 18 to hit. Uh, okay. It's actually not plus five. It's plus seven. You add your proficiency to it. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's what I did. No, no, no. Sorry. It's only a plus three. Sorry. Why I only, it? so my spell attack bonus is plus five. Oh, because I only have a, a, what do I have in there? A 17? Yeah, only, I only oh, have okay. a 17 in it. I don't have a 20 in it. Oh, okay. All right. That, so, so I was correct the first time. So, but all right, my bad. So, uh, what's the total? That there, um, eighteen to hit. Eighteen to hit will be a hit. Roll me damage. Cap. Sorry, I was like, I thought I had the math correct this time, um, but then I got used to playing Zarya for that one brief moment. Uh, that's gonna be four force damage. Four force damage. How does? Yeah. How does uh, Squish do it? <laughs> so he's gonna. Ding. Yep, jump jump onto uh where the arrow where the arrow hole is and uh just pshoo, and um get him right up the nose. No wait, he's uh, facing away. In the ear. Alright, it's gonna go in one ear and out the other. Just like yeah. just like his yeah. father's uh I love you so much. <laughs> God. Alright, so Squish has made his first Wet kill. <laughs> Baby's first no. kill. Not Baby's me. first kill, but not his last. All right. Um, and are you doing any movement, Anthea? <clears throat> oh, good question. Am I? Mm. Um, yeah, I am actually. I'm going to move forward a little bit 
duke 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 Try to go under the hole. And go behind... Uh, behind Carmilla. Flank the door. Right there. All right. Lyric, you're up. Cool. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, what Lyric's going to do is going to take a step, step like five feet forward, closer to uh, Anthea, and is going to... You know, there's a goblin right down, right up there next to Sindri. There is. And I have a crossbow that I think I can angle that through there. If you walk right up to the to the murder slit, you can do it without taking disadvantage. I will or... even do that. That's sounds incredible. Yeah. All right. So it would be disadvantage. They like, would have a we are plus. The slits. They would have a plus five to um, to their well, AC, like but in between <laughs> slots, sort of, for the purposes of this. <laughs> but it's literally a slit for arrows, so you know you might as well just give them one back. Yeah, I will uh, apply arrow to goblin and apply arrow does directly it to the head. Return to sender. Uh, rolling flat, <laughs> or rolling is flat. it okay? Because that's the one. Is that the one with fairy fire? It is not. That oh. one is still glowing okay. and is like dead on the ground with a hole in its head. Oh, interesting. A, cool. Uh, there's yeah, a very gonna... pleased ooze right underneath your crossbow bolt. Going cool. like bouncing up and down. It did a good job and it knows it. Good job. <laughs> Sindri fighting for his life. <laughs> ooze standing in a window. <laughs> The ooze is doing that dance. The dun, 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 dun. Yeah. You know the one. <laughs> it's in the, the, yeah, roll the well worth little shit dragon tonight. dance. Yeah. Yeah. What is that called? I'm gonna spend the determination to make it's, it. It's a, supposed to be toothless. Uh, a little toothless mm. dance. Yeah. What does that turn that into? I don't even know what's actually going to help. Uh, uh, oh my god, I can't math. I, you know what? It probably isn't worth it. I think it gets me like a 13. Probably not worth it at a 13. Not worth it. We're not going to do it. So that's okay. just going to not hit then. And okay, crossbow bolt flies position. through the arrow slit at this goblin that Sindri is fighting for his life against. Oh, so, sorry, Sindri. And uh, we're going to just... Bardic Inspiration, Sindri. Take it. Okay. Thank you. You... We love to see it. Um, all right, Carmilla. Uh, Carmilla is going to see this uh, goblin going for Alessandra and will have a slight twitter of panic uh, and run at this thing. All right. Uh, and hit it with a sword. Make me an attack roll. Oh, and I have inspiration, right? You from do have the, inspiration no, crit. From, uh, from her 20. Uh, that is a... A natural 20, my friends. Is it actually? <laughs> really? All right, who are you giving advantage train. to? Uh, I think I, I, I'm going to turn around and give it to Alessandra. All right. Uh, I am also going to use my... Um, mm, does anybody does... need to move? No. Uh, maybe Anthea or Lyric could move. Do either of you guys want more movement? Or are you good? Oh, I didn't no. even use my full movement on my turn. I'm... I should have moved it. Okay. After. Oops. Okay. You're good? Okay. Yeah. Uh, in that case... Just so in this... case I don't kill this thing somehow... Um, this really basic-looking use... goblin snarls up at you, and uh, I will say the others Actually, look you know like what? elites. I'm... Yeah. This one looks really mundane. Honestly, you don't even think he graduated goblin high school. <sighs> okay. I think I'm doing double damage because of the crit. I think I'm just going to roll with I, it. And... I, I think you're going to be fine. Okay. Uh, oh, great weapon fighter. I, I was literally about one. to remind you, you have great weapon fighter because it's been a while. <laughs> okay, that is going to be uh, 18 damage. Cool. You think in north and south or east and west for in terms of how you <laughs> bisect this guy? I... <laughs> uh, I think east to west, because uh, she's going to kind of slide through the rubble and slit this thing through and kind of bump into the wall. Okay. Um, it is dead, like double dead. Um, uh, 
any any final movement that she has, she's gonna turn around, flick the blood and viscera off of her longsword, face all of these other goblins behind her, <laughs> and right. say, "And who is next?" All right. So, are you stepping through into the southern room to do this? Um, I think I'm just gonna, cause well, so I'm wondering, is that rubble like? Can I see over it? You cannot. It is impassable rubble. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I wouldn't know they were there, so I wouldn't do that. Okay. Um, but it was really cool. Except I'm, yeah, I, I'll use it. I'll step into the room, uh, past, uh, I'll scooch past, uh, Alessandra, okay. um, and, uh, say you're next to the goblin. Right, that's, 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 that's where it is. That's where it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alessandra, it is your turn. You have inspiration on this. So advantage on your roll. Go ahead and give it. I sure do. All right. Uh, yeah, meow. That is a like a twenty-two to hit. Yeah, that's gonna hit this thing. Yeah. Um. Oh, she's not gonna smite this guy. Yeah, it's not worth it. Uh, it's she is going it. to deal. Uh, nine points of. Or hold on. I feel like I'm. Uh, okay. She does seven points of slashing damage to this one. I almost typed ninety-seven points of slashing damage. She does ninety-seven damage. points of slashing damage to this Shit. goblin. He's okay. so dead. Move so to the cheat dead. step. Uh, Ori's still up, which is even more terrifying. Uh, and then he, then she's going to, again, settle into the defense. Nice. That sounds good. <laughs> uh, settling into that defense, uh, you are going to hear the sound of a door open to the north. What's this then? The north. You are going to see a trio of hobgoblins emerge from the northern passageway. Looking around the area, they are going to see splatters of blood on the ground and charge down. Uh, just in time to see Anthea and Lyric standing at the front door. Incredulously, they will turn and look at you. You! Were you the cause of this? N not directly. I'm going to roast you Fumble. off spit. Hides crossbow. And uh, they're going to draw longbows and uh, take some shots at you, I think. Um, so one of them is going to aim directly at Anthea. Anthea, you're right there. Oh my god, at point blank range, that's going to be a 10. No. A longbow bolt <laughs> flies over your head, almost taking your hat off. Another one of them is going to draw and loose at you as well. Uh, that one's going to be a 12. Nope. Anthea, you are dodging out of the way of this like like crazy. And <laughs> an, uh, another one is going to draw and loose at you as well. Three arrows. <laughs> oh, a 12. Oh, gosh. No. I'm assuming you're doing like a halfling jig between the arrows. At this point. Oh, it's the one I learned last night with what's his nuts. Oh, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Marcus saved your life. There um, we go. <laughs> okay. They are going to fire three arrows at you. You are going to dodge all three of them against all odds, and they are going to snarl and draw their blades. Death to the intruders! And you're going to hear... No, please. In... Does anyone speak goblin? No. <laughs> okay. That's the running gag of this. Yeah. Of this... Oh, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> From the <laughs> south. Goblin. You are going to hear... I'm the one! Ah! And several goblins are going to start pouring out the south toward the front door. And that is going it's to time. be- It's time. It is time. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Uh, so uh, one of them is definitely going to pass through. Give me an attack. Uh, that would only be uh, 10. So- 10? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So he is going to duck under your blade and continue running forward uh, and is going to make his way to Anthea, bl scimitar drawn, but is not going to have any action remaining. Uh, the next is going to rush through and the next is going to rush up. So uh, if you spend a reaction, that is two more attacks. All right. Uh, one is uh, hit, hits with a 20. Okay. And the other da one's going to be missed. So. Okay. Um, How much damage on that first one? That's going to be 10 points of damage. Okay, another head uh, she hits. She has the... inspiration from me. Did you use Did that? You oh. Roll that? Oh, I hadn't. I have not used that. 
Okay. Um, you so can roll that on that miss. That's yeah, true. I'll do that on the first miss. The first miss. The first miss? Okay. Uh, so that's a, a five to ten. I could use determination to make it twelve, but I don't think they. I think their armor class is better than twelve. Their so. armor class is better than twelve, unfortunately. Yeah. The goblins are, are pretty well stacked. Uh, they are going to rush out, uh, and one of them is going to be beheaded. Um, <laughs> then two of them are going to make attacks against Lady Alessandra. Uh, two of them are going to stab through the doorway, and just her shield basically is going to be almost a door of its own, blocking the blades. This, this is like peak Lady Alessandra territory. I know. I feel they have chosen poorly. Here. Okay. Um, at the back, you are going to hear a goblinoid voice echo down the hall going, Because I'm not! What happens to Naga? Which has a question at the end of it. The Daryl! Might be, what the hell is going on out there? Or something like that. It has that kind of vibe. Um, top of the initiative, we have Goblin Archer number one is going to take two slashes at... Ooh, uh, Lady Alessandra is otherwise... Uh, occupied. This new person has just come at me with blood. Uh, that's going to be, oh, that's going to be two 18s at Carmilla. That is just my AC. Okay, this armor is good, but it's not great. That's going to be, uh, for a grand total, you you step inside the room and go, you're next! And with the short sword, or pardon me, the scimitar drawn, uh, this one is going to lash forward, dealing six points of slashing and five points of slashing for a total of 11. All right. Sounds uh, good. All right, up at the top, the one that Sindri is fighting uh, is going to make a pair of attacks against him uh, as he does. It's just because I have dodge. Oh, that's true. Uh, he is going to bring his blade along his long, segmented tongue. It is going to go, man thing, you die now, he says in accented common. And okay, the first one's going to be a seven. Doesn't hit. And the next one's gonna be a nine. <laughs> he swings twice at you. Oh, I think I know the next line. Briark, Briark. Uh, and. <laughs> uh, it is your turn. Does an 18 hit? Uh, an 18 absolutely hits this son of a bitch. What do you do? Uh, I'll do seven points of uh, slashing damage. Seven points of slashing damage is pretty good. Oh my God, he is hanging on by a thread. Good thing I have martial arts as an action. Okay. Uh, that's not going to hit. Uh, I am going to use Flurry of Blows, so I'm going to spend right. my last key point and world worse, actually. So, no, never mind. What? No. Yeah. All right. So, barely so holding on. Do you still have Bardic? Did you use Bardic? Oh, you still have Bardic. Um, it would not be enough because I rolled a three and a two. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I rolled plus re <laughs> real bad. Like at best, I could be it's a d6 plus a two, so plus eight plus. Like if I rolled an eight on my uh, or Did a six you, on my bar. Yeah, I was gonna say. It's All like, right, it's so you're going to. Sounds good. You're going to lash out, um, slashing across this one. You're going to cut through the side of his throat. He's going to start bleeding out, but he's still up enough to fight. A little bit of fire still in his eyes, and Thea. Okay, uh, so Squish is far enough away there. that this is going to be just a regular attack. Yeah. Get him, Squish, get him. Uh, all right, squish. 19 to hit. 19 to hit Hell is yeah. a hit. Uh, how does Squish yeah. do it? Oh, yeah. Um, so one this on one, he can kind of, you know what? The ear worked last time. He's going to like vaguely go for the ear again. Yeah. With oh max damage six points of force damage. Okay. I wanted to it's, roll it anyways. It's gonna go <laughs> in one ear and it's going to mushroom. The spatui is going to explode out the side of this thing's head, erasing half of its skull. What the fuck? <laughs> you and it's you, going to <laughs> jump down. Chris, for a second, Sindri is half convinced that he is the fist of the North Star. <laughs> But I missed. Oh, right, Squish. Thanks, bud. Okay. All right, sure. Anthea, anything else on your turn? Three hobgoblins yeah. have fired bows at you? Absolutely. 
Um, I'm going to try Atasha's Caustic Brew in a line for two of them. Uh, in a line, you can hit three of them. Can I hit three of them with yeah, the there's line? Yeah, there's a straight that line that can be, be drawn. Amazing. Okay, I didn't know if it worked on the grid rules or just like uh, we, vaguely. We, we use like... <laughs> We use we use good rules, um, the best Perfect. rules. All right, what's my what's my save DC? That's a great question. Oh, thirteen. Okay, yeah, not, uh, the not much. first it's... one, the one in the front, is going to dodge out of the way, Matrix style, as oh. this horrible scent of bile rockets out of one of your potions. Um, yeah. And the other one, the one directly behind him, is going to be hit full bore, uh, and Please. the one next to him is going to dodge as well. But that one at the back is Kay. going to get hit full bore by this stream of caustic chemicals. Yeah. And it's going to go in like his mouth and his eyes. And just... Yeah. It it just... um. It happens on uh, his turn. It happens on his turn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Lyric, you're up. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, are you moving? Uh, no, actually, probably not. Uh, Lyric's going to move. That's first All thing right. she's going to do. She's All gonna. Right, Lyric, what are we doing? Off, she's gonna, all kind of eyes wide, like just looking down at Squish, that just like projectile slaughtered a goblin right beneath her, because that's alarming. It is um, alarming. Is going to step uh, more fully into the doorway, and will say, "Oi, become someone your own size." Or something to that effect. I was going to what? vicious mockery uh, hobgoblin right, in, uh, in the, like right the closest one. Okay, uh, that is I a wisdom save, wisdom if I'm not mistaken. Eight. Correct. Yeah. Spell uh, save. Does a twelve win? No. So they have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn, and is about to take uh, a D4 of psychic damage. Okay, D4 of psychic damage. Give it to me. It took two points of psychic damage. Okay, and this is the front one? Yep. Okay, the one directly in front of you is going to turn and just start fuming. I'm going to kill you until you're dead from it. Oh. All right. Uh, See, that's not very creative. Um, bye! And uh, Lyric's going to book it uh, heading out. And uh, let's see, it was like five, so 10, 15, jump down, 20. Yeah, she's just ducking down. She's just going to run like hell? Yeah, she's running like hell. Sounds good. Carmilla, it's your turn as Lyric goes whoop and just books it off the side of the castle grounds. Peace. Uh, this goblin that's in the room with me and Alessandra, um, has it been hurt at all? Uh, it has been hurt a little bit. I would, I'd say it's like, it looks like, it looks sternly bloodied. Okay. So, all right. I'm just going to take my sword to it then. Um... Uh, ooh, that's not great. Um, I believe in nine, you. 9, 10, 11. I'm going to use my bardic. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, that's uh, 10, 11, 12. And then I'm going to use my... Uh, no, sorry. Uh, 10 plus 5 is 15. And I'm going to use well, my determination for 17. That's a hit. Yes. And uh, okay. Then it does a thing because you use bardic. Oh yes. Oh yes, and I do additional damage. Uh, ooh, does that count through walls? Because <laughs> uh, it's everyone within a five foot radius of me. Yes. I'll, I'll, what does it do? What, tell me what it does. Uh, it so that's goes the kaboom. Attack roll? Yeah, the attack roll, uh, the target, and each creature of your choice that you can see within five ah. feet. Okay, so not the one behind the wall, but the one through the door. Uh, the one through the um, door, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so they can make a constitution saving throw. Yeah, uh, DC 14. All right, DC 14. Yeah, okay, my, my that's going to be a fail and a fail. Beautiful. So they're both going to take uh, the D6, uh, which is going to be uh, only a one. I rolled okay. a one on my sword, but I will we'll re-roll roll, that. Roll for each differently, weapon. please. Oh, roll each differently. Okay, so the first yeah. was a one. Nice and the other one's a two. <laughs> okay. yeah, uh, and then not. my sword damage is a nine plus three. So how do you do it? 12 damage. Aha. Um, is that really the best you can do? And uh, she'll, she's just going to swing up both hands and just bisect this one up the middle. 
Good work, Alessandra will say as you bisect that one up the middle. And uh, are, you doing anything... <laughs> are you doing anything else? How tall is this door? So uh, the doors inside of this, so the ceilings are 15 feet high unless otherwise noted. Uh, the doors okay. are pretty normal sized doors, but these guys are goblins. So they're pretty short. Um, if you wanted to use okay. spider climb to climb up to the roof and then out the door, uh, what I would do yeah. is I would give you one opportunity attack from the one that just got blown up by the floating note. Uh, yeah, I think I'll take it. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a, ooh, this is going to be close. Um, that is a, that will, that will nick you as you were going through. Damn it. Uh, for a total of seven damage. Seven damage. Okay. I'm almost dead. Uh, don't forget um, your second wind. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Uh, in that case, I think I'm going to use my second wind. Oh, I'll okay. wait till I'm done moving. Um, I would like to move up to the ceiling okay. and uh, like a real spooky spider lady. Um, and it's 15 feet up, 5, 10, uh, 15. Oops. No, don't. Don't so basically, settings. once you're on the ceiling, you can move without provoking because they're only f about four feet tall. And so there's a big five feet between you two. Can you move them way. north five squares? So I'm like, on where? It's so like there. Uh, if you I can make it to... there, yes. You should be able to, yes. Okay. Um, in that case, I would like to get there. How you said this place was on the brink of falling down. I would just mm -hmm. like to assess how close this ceiling is to falling in. A shatter spell would take care of it. As for dealing a ton of damage, uh, what depends what you do. Okay. I'd probably be looking for like a capstone. Mm, you'd have to look for it next round because you've done so much. Can I action surge? Yes, you may. Okay. Uh, Perception? Investigation? I'll let you, so yeah, I'll let you do, uh, if you're action surging, if you're going to spend your action surge, I'll let you do a perception roll and still take okay. an action. Okay, cool. Uh, perception, not investigation, and it's one different, whatever. Either way is fine. Da, 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 da. Uh, that is going to be a 15. 16 a 15? if it's investigation. Uh, I'm going to spend a something good happens to say that there is a piece of old uh, of old ceiling tile that basically is holding a chunk of the roof together uh, right above the entryway. Sick. Uh... You think that if you do more damage than, uh, than, it's, than its health, you can drop stone down on these hobgoblins. Okay, I'm going to attack it. Okay, make me an attack roll. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it is, uh, it is an AC of, uh, let's see, stone, you're an AC 17. That is a 20. Natural or otherwise? A dirty 20. Okay. So you are going to slam in with your blade. And are you going to use your sword like a pry bar? Or are you just trying to like knock the mortar that's holding the stone together out? I, I, I think I think she's kind of upside. You know, she's stabbing downwards because she's standing on the ceiling. Yeah. Um, and she's going to stab in and yeah, just kind of wrench. Okay. Uh, then roll me damage. Uh, okay, I'm gonna use um, maneuver, maneuvering strike, uh, and okay. say, "Andia, move." That's probably a good idea. <laughs> so okay. move backwards. <laughs> uh, she will move backwards. Cool. Uh, that is gonna be oh, not a great. Only ten damage. Ten damage is what you needed. Oh, I shit you oh, not. Oh damn. Okay, so jamming Ooh. your blade into the roof, you wrench and there is nothing for half a heartbeat. And then the horrible sound of grind. And the bricks above you are going to shift. You're gonna be able to step out of the way. That means the goblin, the hobgoblins are going to need to make three deck saves. Uh, that is, oh God, they have zero decks because they're hobgoblins, don't they? Uh, that's a 13. DC was 15, 13, 13. A nat 20. A nat 20 from the oh. one at the back because he's out of the way. But the other two, uh, please do me a favor and roll me 2d10, please. 2d10. Whoa. I guess it's a ceiling. It's a, it's a ceiling of stone. I'm assuming that it's going to do a lot of damage. Basically, uh, the, only 10. 
only 10. Okay, uh, the first one is going to be completely crushed. Uh, the one that was winged by um, by Lyric with that mental uh, with that mental scourge, and um, the stone is going to come down, clipping the side of his head off and crushing him to the ground. Uh, the other one is going to rear back a huge portion of stone, crashing by and shearing his nose off. Given the fact that these are hobgoblins and they have Leon and noses, that is a lot of stone and nose that has been removed. <laughs> All right. Uh, he is also going to have disadvantage on uh, any actions with his remaining hit point or so. Uh, all right. Uh, that is definitely your turn. Alessandra. Uh, Alessandra is, does not know what's happening in the hallway. Just saw uh, Lady Carmilla uh, sc scuttle out and just like deter set her focus at killing the goblin in front of her. Um, Do it. Oh, there it is. There's the 20. Nah. Okay. Yay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Who are you giving, who are you giving it to? Oh, Carmilla. It's the, Carmilla? yeah. Okay. Um, roll me damage. That's 10 points of damage. Oh no, I'd roll twice. That's what a crit does. You roll twice. Uh, that it'll be 12 points of damage. Are she points. dueling? Uh, she's style? not. She's, she, uh, she is dueling style. So she's plus two on, uh, plus two on. On damage? On damage. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So, um, everything I, sh I hit should have taken another two damage all night. So they did. They do. They all. Yeah. Do. So, so that's nine, 11, and then plus he's. Yeah, super dead. He's dead. You're going to stab and step. Uh, and as you do, you are in the hallway between a pair of goblins and um, several goblins to the south that are milling around. Uh, I will have her step back into the room and activate Tunnel Fighter again. That shouldn't cause attacks of opportunity, right? It. Uh, so if she did not step out into the hallway originally, it should not. No. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep it like that then. Yeah, so that so would she, be moving she, her, so... She just ducks That's... out, looks both ways, and goes, ooh. Nah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> um, Hobgoblin number one is going to go now. Um, and give me the damage from Caustic Brew, because that has crashed to the floor. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say that it's still aligned to the one that Nat 20 did at the back. What? Well, the one at the back got a nat 20 yeah. against the falling ceiling, so I'm going to say there's still oh, enough of yeah. a caustic brew line. Oh, it kind of, it actually, it's not concentration or anything. It just kind of coats them, so they have to, like, rub it off. Oh, So it's right. it's out of my hands now. Oh, fair. Um, so what happens to him at the beginning of his turn? Um, he takes... Patong! Seven points of acid damage. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, He's I rolled a four and a three. It's 2d4. He's yeah. had better days. Okay, uh, that is going to start to burn him all over. He is going to snarl and uh, is going to take an action to wipe himself off. That's fair. Uh, and is going to rush to the north uh, and try to uh, try. Oh, no, you know what? He's a hobgoblin. Uh, he's going to clean himself off as an action and ready his bow to fire at... Um, at Lady Carmilla, or at Carmilla, and I'm gonna spend a hurt the more to do so, actually. Oh! With a nat 20. Oh! I'm sorry, it was destiny. Uh, that is well, I'm gonna fall from the ceiling and take death saves. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that Bye, is everyone. gonna be 16 points of piercing damage. You. Uh, I have three hit points. All right, you drop the ceiling on his brothers. He wipes the acid off of himself, notches up, and in Goblin is going to say what you can definitely recognize as die. Briak. Shall I take damage from falling? Uh, no. And thus a death enough. save? No, don't worry about it. I don't, don't hey, me. if a ceiling, I got out of the, I got out of that pretty safe. You're falling onto squishy Goblin bodies. No, she's falling onto rocks. <laughs> You know, she, she, has, she, has she has a point. She has a point. She has a point. Uh, so <laughs> that's gonna de that's gonna deal you one failed death save. Okay. All right. So that was the hobgoblin. The other one has one hit point uh, and is going to see a felled enemy on the floor. Oh boy! No, you're felled. Uh, he's going to pry himself away from this and seeing and. Thea there is going to draw. I'm going to give you partial cover for that, for the stuff that collapsed in the doorway. 
and he is going to fire an arrow at you, notching and staring at you. Are you immune to arrows? No. Did you, did you take a potion? No. Oh my god. All right, an arrow is going to whiz by you. Oh, but like, I thought you were being like, okay. <laughs> no, because I rolled an eight. Uh, an arrow is going to go. Ha <laughs> ha, that was my experimental elixir. Okay. Well, now that I've said it, it's never going to happen again. Shit. No, it's got to be a spray <laughs> on your utility belt. <laughs> arrow okay. away. Arrow be gone. All right. A goblin is going to pour into the hallway in front of El Alessandra. Is Alessandra going to spend a reaction? 100%. Get fucked, little goblin. All right. Let's do it. Uh, take a 15 to hit. 15 to hit uh, is going to be enough. Roll me damage. Bam. That's going to be 12 points of damage. <laughs> All right. 12 points of damage. A He steps into the doorway and there is a hack as his head falls from his shoulders. Uh, another one is going to move through the square in an attempt to bury a sword into Carmilla, uh, which is also going to trigger your tunnel fighter. Oh God. Uh, uh, Here we go. Uh, so that's a nine. I'm going to roll. Um, add my determination for, to make that a plus. Make that 16. 16 is going to be enough. Roll me damage. Uh, plus nine plus points of damage. Yeah. All right. Uh, Carmilla, half, uh, half unconscious <laughs> on the ground. Uh, you are going to look up as the air has been knocked out of you. You're going to see a goblin step up, a blade poised over your throat. And as it comes down at you, your final, final death, a blade pierces through its mouth and it drops on top of you, bleeding onto you. But still, you're alive, which is what's important. Um Another one of them is going to pour in there and is going to make an attack on Lady Alessandra. Uh, that is going to be, uh, that's a 22. She finally That'll takes hit. some damage. She takes three points of slashing damage. Okay. All right. From the south, one of them is going to stab through the door as well. And that is going to be a complete miss, unfortunately. Clang. And, and uh, that is going to be... That is going to be that there. Um, and with that, we are top of initiative back with uh, that goblin's dead. Sindri, you're up. Sindri will kick open the door behind him. What the fuck is going on out here? Uh, and step into the uh, oh, open door. Oh God, hobgoblins. Uh, and then run to the corner. Okay. Uh, and then just like take a deep breath in and then really concentrate his energy thinking about uh, Venom Fang, the green dragon. And mm -hmm. the toxic breath that he blew down on uh, our party, and then breathe poison on these two hobgoblins in a line. He's learning. Yes. So right. that is a, a DC. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's a nat one and a three. All right. So uh... I want you just to describe what poison breath does to uh, two hobgoblins at point blank range. Uh, they're just going to uh, have their lungs collapse in on them, uh, like spray out like like bloody froth and just collapse. Uh, and they are going to collapse down to nothingness. Uh, well, not they're they're going to collapse down as these bloated, veiny corpses as you release a plume of poisonous breath. Anything uh, else you're doing on your turn? Yeah, I have a martial arts attack, so I'm going to... Uh, I'm uh, can you do that following early. a breath? Uh, yeah, because the, the breath takes the place of one of my attack actions. Oh, that's that's dope. I need to read Ascendant Dragon more. Yeah. Uh, when you take the attack action, you can place one of the attacks with an exhalation of Draconic Energy, um, which is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, you, can, you yeah. can just make it to, mm -hmm. uh, to the south. Yeah. <laughs> and then, right. again, Briark! Rushing over yeah, that's the rubble? Weird. Yeah. Just like... <laughs> hey, Anthea! <laughs> Skip over Carmilla. Um, I have my determination again. That is a six. I'm going to get a 15 to hit. 15? Are you spending a determination to get that 15? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a hit. Roll me damage. Uh, that's five points of damage. 
five points of damage. All right, this one is going to get rocked by your, I'm gonna say flying jump kick. <laughs> just like, yeah, how... yeah, just like I'm running down the hallway, flying jump kick on this one. Up A, up A. Whoosh. Up A, you... bam. All right, you're gonna <laughs> slam into uh, him, destabilizing oh. him as he looks back and snarls at you. And Thea, it is your turn. What do you do? Uh, eh. <laughs> I'm going to run forwards. 5, 10, 15. Is that ceiling? It is. Okay. 5, 10, 15. Oh, <laughs> There's, it's grown. Um, yeah, just to, for ease of operations. It's, it's more big. fell down with me. So, down, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Is that, anyway, uh, sorry, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay. I suppose. Um, and I'll go squish. Come here. And he's got. No, I don't know. He's got 30, 30 foot f fly speed. He has a fly speed? <laughs> yeah. Does he grow little goo wings and just... I've been, I've been trying to figure out... Does he get like a nodule in like helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've it's been... like a little tentacle that it goes... Dick, 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 dick. Probably. Wow. He, he learned it from watching Sindri he... do it in front of a mirror. Right? <laughs> if he has... I think he just can work. Uh, yeah, because sometimes they take the the they look like mechanical looking birds. So I think he can just fly. He's just whipping his appendage around. Anyway, <laughs> yes. So he's gonna meet up with me <laughs> essentially. All right, sounds good. Um, and kind of sit on my shoulder and become like a little doo, artillery cannon. <laughs> But uh, for my action, I'm going to use um, Cure Wounds on uh, um, Carmilla. All right. Sounds good. Um, Carmilla, to... you are going to suddenly come back to it. Uh, also, don't forget that you still have that inspiration, Carmilla, when it's your turn. It's right. Oh, and I forgot to use my second. Well, actually, it's good I didn't use my second win because I still would have died from that. <laughs> so, oh, good. Yeah. You did forget to? Good. All right. Yes. How much? I'm sorry, Carmilla I have my help? what? Uh, you have the inspiration from um, nice. uh, from you and Elizabeth. Right, cool. It's gonna be nine points um, back, yeah. and it's it's her, she basically just like pours a potion down your throat. It's like there you go. <coughs> tap tap tap, smack smack smack, and then oh, uh, saving me. <laughs> um, and then two, he's um, oh. Squishy's gonna detect another one in the vicinity, and do a okay. two. All right, right past the first one. Uh, no, the first one, the one right in front of Sindri. Okay. He's kind of uh, like, doo -doo 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 so if Squish doo -doo. held back a little, like on the rubble, oh, yeah. he wouldn't have uh, disadvantage for point blank. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. That sounds it's, good. Yeah, the other time he will was know. A, he's a murder slip. That yeah, he's he's very intelligent. He is very intelligent. He actually has but dark then, vision. Guess who doesn't? That's great. That's you me. just need to you need to wear him like a brain slug. Oh man, that's why my hat's so big. Um. Anyway, <laughs> oh max damage again. Six points of force damage. Six yeah. points of force damage. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that is going to go Patu uh, right into that one, and is going to shatter his face. Uh, he is clawing at his now swollen and pulped nose and eye sockets. Yeah. Uh, he's still up. But oh my god, it is the worst day ever. Um, except for this. Carmilla, it's your turn. I think it's mine, actually. Oh, you're yep. right. There is a little arrow here Sorry. and everything. That's okay. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> um, All right, Lyric, you're up. Yeah, uh, Lyric's actually going to see that a lot of the threats are now very much gone and is going to hop run back up, is going to cure wounds Carmilla again for extra bonus healing because mm -hmm. if Anthea hadn't done it, that's what Lyric was going to do. Uh, I heal you at least some amount because I don't rule well. Uh, that's seven hit points. Mm, that's still pretty good. Yep. And then I have a bonus action. Hey, Camilla, do you want some bardic inspiration immediately after that? Beautiful. This is very inspiring. That's my turn. All right, that's your turn. So you have some bardic inspiration. Um, how do you give it to her? <clears throat> I 
is healing and then going to just go get him. Perfect. All right. Uh, speaking of go get him, Carmilla, it's you're up. Yeah. Uh, okay. I am gonna... So the rubble immediately to Sindri's right um, is not quite pervasive enough that you can't step there to get an attack angle on. I am going to uh, step there. Um, I would like to, as an intimidation tactic, hopefully, I'm going to like loom up behind Sindri um, and uh, I will second wind um, as I like lick the blood from lick the goblin blood off of my face that had been dripped onto it. It's um, like drinking Jägermeister. Delicious. Uh, that's a one. Fucking great, bud. <laughs> well, that you add your you add your level as well, so four at least. Uh, do I add my? Wait, do, what so do I add? So it's D ten plus your fighter levels. Oh yes. Okay. There you go. Okay. Cool. So, so at least yeah, it's not one. Four, so it's four total. So that'll bring me up. Okay, if, it, if you hadn't like the goblin blood, it would have been like a nat twenty. Somehow, <laughs> of on course. A 10. Yeah. On a ten, it would have been nat <laughs> uh, yeah, so would have just, a twenty would have appeared on the ten, um, oh. and is just going to sort of almost blackout looking eyes, and will step forward and uh, just stab into this guy. Hopefully, fingers crossed. All right. Make me an attack. Oh, and I have in, I have inspiration, Rain. If you want to spend it, go ahead. I will. Uh, that didn't really help. Um, as a four, I have Bardic. Uh, there we go. Uh, that is a dirty twenty. That's absolutely a hit. Roll me damage. Okay. Uh, also, uh, the Constitution saving throw from the the Bardic uh, College of. Uh... Right. Uh, that's however much you rolled on the Bardic dice. That's how much. They oh, that was a six. Oh, well, that's what it is. I don't roll for Get it, right? So it's whatever I rolled. So that's a six of whoever I can see within five feet can make a constitution saving throw. So um, just that one. Just that one. Um, but your blade is going to slash in. Describe how that happens and the sonic boom blows it up. Okay. Uh, I am going to just like sort of a bit of a pirouette around behind Sindri and just come around and just stab this thing straight through so that my sword goes like into the wood of the door and just kind of has it hang there through its head for a second and then drag it out, let it slump to the ground. Beautiful. Um, that one is going to die and um, oh, it's great. Uh, Alessandra, it is your turn. There are two left. Yeah, um, she's not hurt that badly. Um would she go in for the kill? Yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. It's Christine. Yeah, she's gonna go in for the kill. Um uh that's a 15 to hit. That's a hit. Yep, and then goblin time. Goblin time. Uh one plus three plus two is six points of slashing damage. All right, stepping into the doorway, Alessander is going to lash out striking the goblin down with an easy blow to the face. And then just like keep slow breathing and set up into Tunnel Fighter again. Just keep like clean off some of the goblin gore on her shield as she settles in. All right. Uh, that is going to be her turn uh, gonna... down the... Oh, so is it... she only stepped out. Is she going to step back in? Can she split uh... movement like that? She, could, she can. I'm just wondering if she would like just like stay in front of all of us or... Mm. Because you can hole. move through her square. Yeah, that's the... We're, True. The only True. thing is, if they decide to do the... Sorry, she's gonna sorry. Stay, she's gonna, yep. No, she's going to stay there. She's going to stay there? All right. Um, the one at the edge of the hall is going to let out a yelp and dive forward, uh, taking two vicious swings at Alessandra uh, with her blade. The scimitar is going to lash out, and that is going to be uh, 22. Yep, that'll hit. Okay, that is going to be a majestic one, two, three points of damage. Yep. And I'm going to spend a hurt them more to re-roll my miss. Let's try this again. And that's going to be a nat 20. Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, for a total of six points of damage, how many hit points has she taken so far? She's taken a total of 17. 17? She's still up. I think yeah. she has 18 hit points. <laughs> oh, all right. Close. <laughs> um, 
so it is Fuck. going to bury a blade in Alessandra's stomach right at one of the gaps in the armor, and then is going to use its bonus action to disengage and dive roll to the right, bypassing her tunnel fighter and running like hell. Oh. But I think I know who's next. Uh, yes, it's Sindri. Yeah, I'm chasing after him. It's time. It's go time. Get him. All right. Get him. <laughs> Get him. Go time. 15, 20, All right. 25, 30, 35, 40. Just I have 40 feet of movement. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to use. Uh, oh, pardon me. This so is, this uh, very. So the one who the one who stabbed you was not a she. It was this cantankerous, cantankerous goblin. Oh. This big Danny DeVito goblin stabs her, rolls, and runs. All right, you chase hey, after. You get back here. I like, yeah. sl- I'm gonna hold on, hold on. Dramatic moment. Slide underneath Lady Alessandra's legs to get through. Perfect. And then uh, push off the rubble. Hella jealous. Then, yeah, just slide, uh, and then go in for the scimitar or the short sword attack. Okay. Uh, and that is a twenty-three to hit. That is a hit. Yeah, my dice, my dice, my dice. That's ten points of damage. Oh, beautiful. It's still up. This is one of the commanders. All right, martial arts attack. Martial arts attack? And that's a that's a miss. Oh, it is a miss, miss? Yeah, it's a three. Okay, you used your bardic, right? No. Uh, I could pop you know, on, on, three. On, on a three, though. Yeah, like, so I, I would normally be at a nine. So, like, it's like a, like, 50, like, mm, 75% chance, or 25% chance of it working. Mm-hmm. But it would be really funny. So yeah, I'm gonna, gonna use the bardic inspiration. Gonna yeah. use it. All right, that's five. So that puts it to an eight. Fourteen to hit. Fourteen to hit. Uh, that is yeah. not a hit. But that does mean that he still has to make a Constitution save, though, doesn't he? Or is it is only it a hit? hit? Uh, let me double check. Um... Uh, immediately after you roll for the inspiration and add it to an attack against a target, the moat thunderously shatters. Target and each creature of your choice that you can see within five okay, feet. Okay, that will go up then. So, so five points of damage. Five points of damage. <laughs> All right. Uh, it explodes in his ears. So you're going to miss the hit, but are going to deal um, five points of damage to him. And top of the initiative, well, not top of the initiative, but back in initiative, um, Anthea, it is your turn. Okay, it's go time. Five, I can move through squares. 10, 15, 20. So you can 25? make it right in this tunnel through yeah. the rubble. Oh, wow, I can go halfway. So you can see this this goblin clutching onto a door handle. With, oh no, I can't just fly Squish over. Squish has to go through the door like a real boy. Okay, um. I'm going to make a light crossbow attack. All right, do it. Let's go. Oh, wait, you know, oh, yay. Yay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go. What do you got? Oh. Nope. Uh. Nope. Even if I use proficiency, that would be a nope. But that's okay. Because Squish gets to make his attack. All right, Squish, do it. Let's go. Let's go. We have. Nope. Seven, 12. Nope. Even with my proficiency bonus, that would not work. <sighs> nope. That's okay. All right. We move on. All right. So there's a. As another one of these bolts fires into the wall, um, and it is. Oh, Lyric's turn. Is it now? I'm kind of out of the way, though. Um, but that's okay. I can still do something. You could make um, it through. Yeah, I could. Five, ten, 15, 15, 15, 20, 25. 15, you could 20. make it just inside of this room. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So rushing cool. through Alessandra, you're going to push your way into the room, seeing this goblin escaping Sindri. How horribly beat up do they look? Very, very, mm. very damaged. And how hurt does Sindri look? Uh, very? A little bit? Medium. Okay. I'm going to cast Sleep. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, I cannot see, be magically it, slept, so. Yep, so it's going to skip you. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, within 90 feet, creature into magical slumber. Uh, I need to roll 5d8 for my hit points that I need to use for this. So I can do that in roll 20, I think. How does that work? It's like less slash roll. 5d8. Twenty-nine hit points. Twenty-nine hit points. Uh, he's going to grab the door. Get out back. Yep. So, and is going to slump to the ground asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and as he does so, the fight is going to come to an end. There is a Ooh. brief, momentary hiatus, and then to the north, right around where you brought the roof down. Carmilla, you're going to hear ching as a tripwire hits and another section of roof just completely collapses, <laughs> no longer held up by the support struts that you brought down. There's going to be a loud <laughs> as part of the roof collapses next to the part that you intentionally collapsed. Oh my it God, seems that's a great so mindset. funny. I know there literally was a was a trap right there. When I when I hear that, uh, if we are out of combat, oh, yeah. um, she's gonna dive and like push Alessandra out of the way and like brace as if she's about to take a, the whole weight of a, a the ceiling down on her. All right, and, then and okay as you do, run. you're going to pin her to the ground. She has one hit point left. She's breathing hard and fast up into your uh, up into your face blood along the side of her fair hair and you've kind of like you're kind of over her on the ground bracing her with your back and i think we're okay sorry and we'll like scramble up and offer a hand <laughs> oh it's quite all right and she will take your hand and as she does so i think that's where we're going to take a quick break so folks don't go anywhere Ooh. we'll be right back with more craig ma shenanigans after oh, this quick shit. everybody welcome back this is the part of the program we're going to talk to you after like i don't know five minutes we got we got a castle to craig ma or a keep to craig ma we got to keep this place so i think it's so funny you brought the roof down and like right next to it there was just a big a big problem a big problem indeed uh and i love it so um i checked in with christine she's in bed right now and is making a lot of uh, noises and watching i don't know something about gemstones on her phone she's like half awake um she was very happy about the sapphic tackle and um was was like yeah, yeah i killed people <laughs> i i <laughs> i had to i was like there's no there's like come on the roof i love down. you guys playing the long game on that it's so good <laughs> Um, that was that was my that was when we first started talking about it how like maybe there would be a thing i was like it's gonna be slow burn it's, slow it's burn. gonna be <laughs> slow burn. Be great um i'm very excited folks we have some wonderful stuff coming down the pipeline to you but we also have just some like stuff that's coming back finally um once i check in with christine and figure out what everybody's doing we'll know what we're doing for tomorrow night um i'm sorry that shards is slightly delayed but i guarantee that when shards comes back in full it will be coming back with some very special things that I spent a lot of money on. So I think you're really going to like it because, God damn it, you better at this point. 
because it's going to be rad as hell going into season five. And that's all I can say. Uh, besides that, um, we have, uh, what other sheet stuff? Um, so we have some announcements uh, that are greater than us. A big notice that um, we are going to be participating in Extra Life as always. You can you can donate to our Extra Life right now with all proceeds going to the, uh, uh, the Children's Miracle Network and to Extra Life Charity. Uh, but they have moved Extra Life Tabletop Appreciation Weekend from August to April, which is good in some ways because that means that August to November, the, that, that's back to back basically. And having the, what is that? Uh, eight months, six, eight, nine, eight, seven months apart then? So number of months. Number of months. Uh, it's That's about a half year apart now, which is pretty good. Um, but that means that normally we would run Dork Tales Expo as a channel fundraiser in the middle of March. And that's a little abrupt to do that. So we're looking at moving Dork Tales Expo to later in the year, um, which is good for a lot of the guests that say they wanted to be on. We have a bunch of people from uh, the, the other hemisphere that are probably going to come and guest and give it some advice on how to run games and all that fun stuff. Uh, but besides that, we've got a bunch of stuff on the agenda for, oh, thank you very much, Brando, for saying that season four was pretty damn good. Uh, I want to revise the last, like, five minutes of the last episode because we were a little rushed because everybody was exhausted. But, um, and hell, hi, Charmed Fantasy. I like your name. Um, but besides that, um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a good time. I'll have more info about that soon. Uh, we're heading forward on a, a descent into Avernus, which will be replacing Strixhaven when it ends. Uh, and Strixhaven is coming back in eight days. Oh, we should talk, Krista. We should just talk in general. How you doing? Just in general, yes. And just in general. But no, I yeah, I have I have to get people's summer plans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh what else? Uh what else is going on? Um, we won't be participating officially uh with streamers or streaming for survivors this year because it happens the last week of april or we last week of march uh so uh we all talked about it and uh, figured we probably shouldn't be putting that on you guys because we're going to be asking for uh, you know a lot of donations there in the short period of time um so while we will not be officially participating i think some of us are going to go pop over to tabletop titties uh yeah, and go great. hang out with them um, and I, I had talked to Shar about it and she was very sad to hear that um, we would not be participating as apparently uh, next to their like big marquee game. We were one of their biggest contributors. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, fortunate always hits above its weight class. It's very true. So yeah. So uh, uh, keep an eye out last weekend of March. Uh, I think it's the 23rd. 22nd yeah. 24th something like that but yeah well you might see some of us over there if you uh if you just want to come hang out yeah and we'll we'll see if anything else can happen if we get around like one game or something i don't know the, the problem is that we don't want to put the impetus to a constantly be asking for donations you know because it's i don't we the last thing we want to do and we do talk about this a lot behind the scenes like in production team meetings about how like oh we it is an impetus to be like to constantly be asking for things from you guys and we don't want to burn you out because, I mean, the channel, for one, exists on your support. Um, ad revenue only goes so far. And um, it, it's always fantastic to see more of you on the Patreon. Oh, actually, I have finally have permission to announce um, what is what is the deal, I think. Um, so, uh, folks, we're at 150-something patrons right now. And we've been holding strong there for quite a few months. Uh, but if we hit 175, so just, just 25 more paid patrons... Uh, or 20 more. I don't even know where we are. Um, Christine is going to run a game, and I finally have permission to tell you what game it is, because we have announced it on Patreon, so we might as well announce it to you. Uh, that would be a Regency-era D&D game uh, in the style of Pride and Prejudice. Um, so there's a module for it that she she's going to run that I backed on Kickstarter quite a while ago, and she's very, very excited about it. I want to play someone named Lord Orkington. And I, that's all I care about. Uh, I thought it was Tuskington. It, it's it's Tuskimus Orkington. Tuskimus. I think there was Tuscan there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there'll be Tuscan there, all right. <laughs> Which In means, God we tusk. Uh, if you are watching and you are not a person that is uh, able to uh, be a patron, or perhaps you already are a patron, uh, share the channel. If you're yeah. in a other D&D &D 
group if you're if you're old like me and are on facebook groups uh share them with your friends on facebook uh you know post a screenshot of you watching the show on instagram and tag us and uh you can you can really help us out with no no cost to you aside from a couple minutes of your time so yeah and hey if you're sitting here watching us for four hours what's a couple extra minutes (laughs) Oh man, we need to do more YouTube shorts too. We need to, you and and the Tiki Talkies. I need yeah. Once once I'm in not as many games, that's my that's my goal. <laughs> that's and that's once my fair. computer is built, <laughs> that's also which fair. will hopefully be soon. I follow Caitlin on, t- on TikTok. <laughs> follow Caitlin. Yes, on TikTok. do it. Um. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be doing. More. I need to do more advice videos too. Um, oh, also, uh, I don't, I can't tell y'all that, but, uh, I just, I, I'm, you're going to be seeing my name in print more in the future very soon. Uh, I'll tell, I'll tell all of you about it later. Uh, but there's some new module stuff that I'm working on. Uh, I can't tell you anything because of NDA stuff. Um, and, and just not announced yet, but, uh, yeah, some more writing stuff from, for me. And I need to, uh, I need to do more writing for the Patreon actually. Um, so yeah, join up. Um, what else is there that's happening? Amy's awesome. Caitlin, your baby's almost one. Yep. I got him 18 months clothes now because we were at the play place today and his neck, the the, the back of his collar was gaping. And I was He's like, that, that's embarrassing. <laughs> you got a thick baby. <laughs> maybe a little small on him. <laughs> You've got a yeah, tiny Jason I Statham. Do. He's, uh. Yes. Right. Yes. Big. Big. Oh, a uh, fun fact, actually. So, um, I really liked the idea of Squish, um, the name, uh, for the ooze because my mom likes to call Orion Little Squish. Oh. So, and well, now I can't yeah. hurt it. Well, no, that's okay. It's it's okay. essentially immortal. Like it just oh, that's fair. reforms from the from the from the stone. Basically, I have to remake it on another day. But fair. Yeah. I can't hello, hurt it. Yes. Good to see you there. <laughs> oh, we're well, taking it. Oh, one more minute before we hop back into game after a bathroom break, but good to see you here. Welcome. Welcome. Um, so what else? Oh, I just ordered 40 more chibis. Uh-huh. <laughs> from the chibi, from our chibi more artist. Art. Light. More art. More I'm art, so including the, the chibis for this game, which are going to yes. be super dope um i'm excited oh god she's such a good artist and Uh, i and sorry finish your chibi talk i was gonna say that there's a special thing that christy you did you did an audit of that sheet and you might have Uh seen my special thing that i can't announce yet Uh i'm very excited you know i found a website that actually sells those right i'm very excited because i'm definitely gonna get one (laughs) damn it Uh-huh. Uh that <laughs> Oh no. Uh I was going to say thank you to Raven with Bobbles for the incredible dice. I finally got mine. Uh I picked them up from Kelly this weekend. As anyone yeah. in the uh uh Baldur's Gate game <laughs> watched the live feed of of me trying to get a hold of Amy to get their address. <laughs> lot it's gonna be great hey folks i love you big much um i will ship i'm shipping you yours um probably tomorrow i have to go out and return a bunch of things i bought a bunch of like suit jackets on sale and none of them fit the way i want to like they're almost good but they're not like it's one of those like that i hate it so much i'm in this weird size where like Mm because like the pandemic and but also like i can't move my shoulders because you can't tell on stream but i'm really i'm really wide up here I'm kind of wide down I here too, forget. but it's different. Whenever, whenever I make things for you, I'm always like, okay, he's a little bit bigger than me in the shoulders. So I always fit it so that it's like baggy in the shoulders for me. And then I put it on you and you're like, eh. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. I'm sorry. I just always I've got, forget I'm how too broad you are. It's broad. It's like, broad. It's so true. Broad. So broad. broad yeah. I'm, I'm actually really excited. <laughs> Kel is. Um, it's from carrying this channel. It's Yeah. I know. I I would. I couldn't do it without you guys. You you're amazing. Mm. A DM is only as powerful as his players. Um, and uh, in that case, that's not very powerful with dice rolls. But it's you know you're still you're still gorgeous. Um, 
uh, Kel is finishing up my outfit for Dark Ages Vampire on Wednesday. Um, so that should be ready tonight or tomorrow, I think. I'm very excited. It's a lovely vest. And I've got a, a fancy jacket to wear under it, or a fancy shirt to wear under it. Uh, but I'm very excited. Uh, you need to come watch Vampire, guys. You do. Because we can't just have vampire watchers watch it. We want you too, because we love you. Um, I'm going to yawn, and then we're going to hop back in the game. You ready? All right. Let's do it, folks. Uh, a one, a two. Hello, and welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, here on Dork Tales. The battle is over, and you find yourself in what appears to be a large banquet hall. As I said before, the western portion of this large hall ended in a wall of rubble, but the remainder of the room is still intact, if somewhat smeared with bits of blood and a snoring goblin. This was once the castle's banquet hall, with a soaring ceiling 25 feet high here. Two large wooden tables with plain benches stand in the middle of the room, and a brass brazier full of glowing coals is tucked into one corner. Dirty dishes, half-full stew pots, moldy heels of bread, and gnawed bones cover the table. And in the corner, a tough-looking goblin is snoring away, enraptured by Lyric's sleep spell. What do you do? Where do you go? Someone should either tie him up quickly or do away with him before the spell ends. Well, he might know where Gundren is. We shouldn't get rid of him before we ask, we question him. That's so a good then. idea. Let's like, tie him well, up. Okay, I'm on it. Uh, can you go block the door? The door in oh, the corner. Sure. Yeah, the south. No, the, the, yeah, the southeast corner. The one on the. <laughs> the Cinder will run over and like pull out his his rope and tie up the goblin real quick. All right. Um, and I'll, I'll lock there. the other door near me. Okay. Uh, so looking around, it appears that there are three doors into this room. There's the one that you all piled through at the west, as well as a door that opens to a ton of collapsed debris immediately to the north. Uh, that mostly is taking care of itself at this point. <laughs> uh, but besides that, uh, Alessandra can go and lock the open one as well uh, to the west. Uh I will also have a Lady Alessandra use her healing uh, light on herself, her ASMR healing, healing ability. Everybody here, you've got a few minutes in the room. Anybody who wants to take a short rest may do so. Well, if we're doing a short rest, then I will do the song of whatever the heck to you know, let everyone heal a bit more. Awesome. Lyric, can you make me a wisdom save, please? Oh, I sure. Do you add your constitution modifier for every dice you roll, or just... Yes, you do. Uh, and one's okay. re-roll, because I'm not a sadist. You said a wisdom mm -hmm. save? A wisdom save. Are you sure that's what you wanted? Yeah. <laughs> that's a five? Five. That sounds great. Um, you're going to start plucking some strings. And uh, can you do me a favor? Um, yes. You are going to start singing a song of rest. And then beholden, you are going to start singing a song that you remember from your writing. Uh, you are going to lose your level of exhaustion oh, upon nice. singing this. Well, I've sent you the lyrics. Lyric. Okay, so... So as Lyric sings that, did anybody roll a six on their hit dice? Cool. 
Um, you are going to feel very, very warm as Lyric sings this song. And as you do, um, you are going to gain resistance to fire for the next hour. I don't think I've heard you perform that before, Lyric. Uh, it's a... I've been s stuck in my head just recently. It's, it's a new one. And Amy, take a point of inspiration for that. Huh. Sindri will kind of like look over to like Carmilla and like but it's a uh, I'm it's an interesting piece you're working on. Is that what you were thinking about yesterday? Yeah. I can see why I was consuming. Hmm. Yeah, that was really, really nice, Lyric. <laughs> Anthea's just gonna be playing with Squish like a like a contact juggling ball. <laughs> splark, splark. <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing in that lyrics that like sparks like a oh, this sounds like a something. Make me a religion roll. Oh, interesting. That's a 19. A 19? Oh, that's real good. <laughs> uh, I'm going to send you a private message. Oh! Okay, so just Secret one notes. moment. Secret notes. Secret notes. Secret notes. Interesting, interesting. Yes, you can give that a quick skim, please, if you'd like. Okay with a 19. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, that is the only daughter that exists in terms of that. Like, on a on a high-profile level, at least. Everybody's somebody's daughter, technically. But that's the big <laughs> one. Okay. All right. I will feel this may be a sensitive subject, so I may bring it up to uh, bring it up to Lyric when we are alone. <laughs> Sindri will go over to our friend the goblin. Hey, bud. Did you speak common? Do I live if I speak common? Yeah. I'm fluent. I'm Sindri. Nice to meet you. Yeg. N All right, Yeg. I think we can uh, work together on something. Now, is there a dwarf somewhere in this keep? Can you make me either a persuasion or intimidation roll, please? Can oh, Anthea you... jump on the table? Answer the question! <laughs> yes, please. please roll with advantage. All right, it would be... Uh, int you know, in that case, intimidation. Let's go with it. Let's do it. Uh, that would Anthea be... Anthea is uh, very intimidating. That would be and a seven squish! That would be a 17. Honestly, he's going to flinch at the squish. He saw yeah. what he could do. Right? Uh, yes. Straight later. Dwarf. Stinky one. We were going yeah. to eat him later, perhaps. But now boss doesn't want us to. He's... He's with the master. Is that the spider? Spider? No, King Gr King Grohl. King Grohl, okay. King and Grohl. where are they? Don't kill me. No. You see, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go rescue Gendron, and I'm going to leave you locked up in the room over there. And if you betray me, I'll let you know exactly who led me to my friends. 
And if you stay there quietly and have helped me, I'll let you go. I wish no harm on you. I just want my friend back. Northeast Tower. They're meeting with a drow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there, there are others here, too. What others? More goblins. Hobgoblins. Along the way. Is there a way to, to, uh, to the Northeast Tower without being disturbed? Head north. Go to Ruin Tower. North. Ruin Tower then, North, okay. Then go through. A quiet guard quarters on, on the south of Hallway. Then you go right into... into meet with King Grohl. Thank you. You've been very helpful and very, very quiet. And Sidri will shove, like, a cooking rag into his mouth. He's gonna start start will... sucking the grease off of it. Yeah, have fun with that. Sindri will drag him by like the rope and mm. sh throw him into one of the tower, like the tower rooms to the southwest. Perfect. And just lock. That's a great place for him. Okay. I'll be back. I'll be back for you later. Level up. Oh, I should have asked if any of you had any questions. I'm so sorry. That was rude of me. No, that's fine. I think that went very well. Okay. You think so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need a little squish plush or something. <laughs> Just be <laughs> miming. You know what? If you if you talk to certain members of our audience, I think they'd make it for you. Or just like a, a stress ball that's got like goo in it. Oh yeah, that works. Oh, yeah. I'm sure uh, something uh, exists. Do any of the goblins that we killed have anything on them that's like important or like keys or maps or, you know. So none of the ones immediately around here seem to. Looking around, you can see that um, you, you've got six dead goblins from here four other dead gob goblins from the main area that were acting as archers, as well as some goblins that were asleep in one of the lower <laughs> quarters. Uh, so looking around, you can see a ton of different um, uh, different things here. You will see that next to where you've locked him up in the Southern Tower, there is a sleeping quarters there. Um, so these ruined quarters are just to the Southwest, the cat, uh, the, the, um, Southwest Tower. Uh, there you can see there are some bedrolls um, and and that's about it there. But uh, to the north, there were hobgoblins over the wreckage. Yeah. You could head that way. Yeah, I think that's that's our... I'll check with the group. Is it that's our plan direction? Follow, follow goblin, goblin advice? Yeah. As long as Could've he seems as truthful. Yeah, so long as you can get that's to that Northeast Tower. Let's let's go that way. Seems to be a direct route, anyways. All right. So making your way into the front hallway, you can climb over the rubble from uh, Carmilla bringing the house down. It's rough terrain, but you'll be able to make it across. And one by one, the uh, six of you with Squish are going to be able to make it to this northern hallway. There is a side entrance that is blocked from the pretty much the center of the keep there um, that has had tons of rubble fall down from the ceiling. You can see that there is an open door to the north that leads into what appears to be some type of storeroom. Old casks and sacks of rotting grain fill this storage area along with jumbled piles of gear. Next to it is an open door leading into what looks like mm, more luxurious quarters than the goblins had. Floor, four plain straw pallets and bedrolls are lined on the floor of a small barrack here. Brackets on the wall hold weapons, spears, swords, morning stars, and more. The north wall shows some signs of damage, but the floor is swept clean of rubble. Are any of the weapons of any good quality, or do they seem just like very serviceable weapons? Pretty standard, but why don't you make me an investigation roll as you head in? Oops. That was a nat 20. 
I perfect. I fi I finally got Christine's luck. Beautiful. Um, all right, so heading into the Hobgoblin quarters, uh, taking a look around, you're gonna see that there are five spears, four long swords, three morning stars, two great swords, and a quarter staff. There's a great sword on the wall, Carmela. What are you using right now? So you say a long sword. It looks like it's very serviceable. It's rather plain, mm -hmm. but it's hobgoblin make. Ooh, so it's very what's... martial, very shined. Uh, great swords are two d six. Two d six. Ooh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think she's kind of getting. She she'll keep the long sword because she, mm -hmm. you know, it's a family, it's a family sword, but. And 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 you know I I said in our chat earlier that we're just a, uh, Alessandra and I are just a pair of lesbians with long swords, um, but <laughs> uh, I think I will I think I will uh, take the great sword off the wall and sort of admire it for a moment and kind of look back and will anyone feel left out if I take this. Alessandra will say, oh, no, that that's quite all right. Okay. Uh, yeah, she'll uh, take it, see if she has any kind of... She, she has a lot of weapons on her, so she's going to try to find a spot to put a greatsword. Sounds good. Um, now, Sindri, as you are looking around as well, you're going to see that none of the weapons here are magical. But along the wall, there is one last thing that is hanging off one of these hooks. It is a gilded quarterstaff. Ooh. Ooh. Engraved with stylized <laughs> feathers along its riveting. As you pick it up, it's surprisingly light. Barely a pound. So we'll give it a quick sp playful spin. It is the finest staff you have ever held in your life. Huh. Curious. Lyric, what do you make of this? And it, he'll just spin it around and... What is it? The, just a very, very nice... I wonder how this got here. Like, check out the feathering on it. It. It's a nice stick. Okay. Congrats. May I make a history roll? Sure. Ah, uh, it's a 10. It's a nice it stick. Might be a, it might be... The feathers look... They look like more than just regular feathers that are etched into the side of the glass, uh, probably of the side of the gold there. But you're not exactly sure what they reference. Mm. Something mystical, obviously. I'm going to uh, pull onto this for now if no one else minds. I had, I don't think uh, quarterstaffs are finesse weapons. Uh, you can use them as monk weapons, though. Sindri is very pleased with this either way and now has a new prop. So he's very excited to play with something. Right. All right. So you can use that as a monk weapon, which means that you can upgrade to a D8. It's great. Sweet. Thank you. Hey, ah. it's, it's <laughs> dope as shit. Good job, Donatello. All right. Um, so you're going to look around that. Now, in the storeroom, can is anybody poking around in there? Mm -hmm. I think Lyric will be. Oh, Lyric. Can you please make me an investigation roll? And I'm actually okay at investigations, so that's going to be a 19. Looking around, you're going to find two things inside of here. Most of the most of the casks are full of salted meat, but one cask is full of an exceptional dwarven brandy. It's just mixed in with the junk. <laughs> the goblins would have drank it by now had they noticed, probably. But looking at it, it's about about 20 glasses worth of brandy. It smells divine. Yeah, I don't spoke so I can just, you know, crack it open. And you can crack it open, yeah. I don't mind if I just have a, a sip of this right now. No? Anyone? You, so you Brandy? take a you, you take a glass of brandy and down it? Yeah. Gain a temporary hit point. You feel a tingle run down your spine as you as you swallow this um, very just kind of uh, this this molassesy burning brandy that Is fills it tail you with curling. Warmth. 
You, oh, tail curling. You'd curl your toes if you still had any. It warms the cockles. <laughs> I, Does, what do you have, Lyric? I found some brandy. Oh, it has been years. Uh, is it worth Warm. sharing? Oh, if it's oh, yes. dwarven, it is likely worth sharing. Uh, she'll come over yeah. and hold hand out, <laughs> and she'll take a swing. Um, you gain a temporary hit point. Cool. It's great. Oh, that is very good, Brandy. I suppose some fortification would be fine, within moderation. Lady Alessandra says, and takes a swig as well. Is there any uh, label on the side? Uh, there is not. It has been well rubbed off. You can just see the word Waterdeep. Sedri will take a mug. Gunner probably won't mind. <laughs> I'm assuming this isn't his. All right. Uh, um, it is incredibly strong liquor. Um, dwarven brewery for sure. Um, everybody's ha everybody who takes a drink of it is going to gain a temporary hit point. Yay! Anybody going back for seconds? What were you going to say, Caitlin? Oh, she just said I don't want to be left out. Oh. Yeah. You could go. Cheers. Ahead. Cheers. <laughs> Sindri will often offer the toast up in Dwarven. Something, something, something infernal. Draconic. <laughs> Common. <laughs> I mean, Gundren taught me that, so let's go get him. Yeah. All right. You all take a swig. And as you are looking around, just kind of getting a sense of things, um, taking the swig, putting the glass down, you are going to glance down, Lyric, and see that among the various things is a pile of armor as well as a brilliant shining sword tucked amidst the barrels and looking at it okay so, you know that seems particularly out of place you are going to recognize sildar's gear that was stripped from him there's a chain mail uh an unsheathed longsword with an emblem of lever of Neverwinter worked into its hilt. It's pretty bloody. I oh. think. Huh. Well, we definitely have something to bring back to him now. Um, should we? Um, do we have? So we will like start trying to like load it into his pack. Uh, Should we? Why any... don't we uh, borrow one of these chests and we'll leave it at the front of the castle? That way, it will not weigh us down when we go get Gunburn. That's a good idea. Thank you. I'll help Sindri sort of empty out a crate of stuff and fill in all of uh, Sindar's okay. stuff. All right. You Sildar. can easily reclose the, the small barrel cask. And um, hell, you can even just start a pile inside of the Hobgoblin's room where all of their weapons are. You might as well take them and sell them. Yeah. Perfect. All right. And then you can even shut that door. Click. All right. Um, what is your passive... For oh, no, there we go. They're all right there. Um... As you close that door and prepare to continue further in, your half-elf ears are going to twitch slightly, Sindri. You're going to hear a bit of muttering coming from the next room over to the east. There are people inside of it. Well, goblins. Uh, Sindri will uh, just motion for everyone to be quiet. And then move up to the door and listen. Make me a an insight roll. 
Ten. Ten? It's goblin. You can tell that much. It's some type of... Chant? A mutterance? I think there's some sort of... Like, bring everyone in. I think there's some sort of ritual going on in there. Let's go break it up. Okay. <laughs> Draw the new greatsword. Yeah. Everyone, ready? Yeah. On me? If this door's locked, I'm going to be really embarrassed. <laughs> All right. Uh, bursting through, can I get an initiative roll as you kick open the door <laughs> on the other side? Uh, this... Uh, there's a chamber that occupies the northern tower of the castle. A stone altar stands in the middle of the room, covered with blood-stained black cloth. Gold ritual implements, a chalice, a censer, are carefully arranged atop the altar. Two archways to the south are covered with heavy curtains. And there you see a goblin and two, well, a goblin dressed as a goblinoid priest and a pair of acolytes praying at the altar. Uh, and... That is going to be a surprise for you guys. Uh, let's check initiative. Uh, you are going to burst into the room and they are going to look up in a bit of surprise. Uh, it is your turn, Carmilla. What do you do? I think I'm just going to sort of make a bit of a leap over Sindri as he busts the door open. Uh... And seeing what's going on here, I think I'm going to go for the first guy closest to the door. Uh, I'm going to go right. for the goblin that's closest. All right. One of the praying and goblins. I will try out my look. new sword. Try your new sword. Let's see if it's worth the hype. Ooh. Oh, that's a 19 to hit. That is absolutely going to be a hit. Roll me damage. Uh, I'm also going to use a maneuvering, uh, or not a maneuvering, a distracting strike. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the next attack roll against this target by an attacker other than I will have advantage. Okay. Uh, that is an eight on my superiority die, which is nice. Um, do you spend, and then eight. uh, do you spend it after the roll, but before I tell you what happened? Uh, I, I spend it um, as a part of my damage. Okay, good to know. Yeah. All right, so with that, you are going to bring your blade down and hack this one to ribbons. Sorry, it's, and that's actually 16 plus 3, so 19 damage. You, this thing, your blade is going to come down and your first swing of this greatsword is going to heft up and over and down and there's an explosion of limbs firing off to all edges of, of this opponent's square as this great sword cleaves this goblin into uh, giblets is the word I'm thinking of. You, this goblin has to be buried in a sack. Um, you are, you, the first thing you think is, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Anything else you're doing? Uh, I think... I can can I if I still have movement left can I take more movement? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure a splitting movement a splitting movement works. Okay, so I went 5 10 15 20 25. Uh I'm just going to face off against this guy over here to make sure that there's room for everybody to get in. Um and uh I'm just going to kind of take a stance with this great sword and just grin with the, the fangs that are starting to grow back in. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, that is your turn. Uh, down the initiative further, we have Lyric. I suppose that's because the other goblins are, oh, because it's a surprise round or because they're dead? It's because they look up going, <gasps> shocked, caught right. off guard. Right, right, right. Uh, we're going to move up to into the doorway. All right. And so the one at the northern wall, which so which is the one that looks like the um That is the one at the north that was at the top of the uh at the top of the altar is praying, her arms spread wide. Okay. Okay. Let's vicious mockery. Okay. 
That's a four. I'm going to spend a hurt cool. to reroll that. Okay. But that's a 19. Fuck. You got enough of them, Nacro. Yeah, I've got two, so four, six, action. eight. I've got nine. You maybe blow yeah, a hurt the more, though. <laughs> but um, I only have one Bardic available left, so I don't particularly want to spend it quite yet. That's fair. So uh, I'm going to do nothing else. Okay, you run in and you use Vicious mar Mockery. What do you say? Try praying on this, you stinky maggot. Ugh, she gives you a glare. All right. Uh, Alessandra or Sindri? Uh, Sindri will go first because I know my stats better. Um, Sindri is going to uh, run up to uh, the the priestly goblin-ess. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. And Sindri will... Uh, attack with his new his new quarter staff he really wants to try out um no that's probably not gonna do it uh 11 11 uh, is not i don't have bardic do i don't have bardic because i spent it you know what they're surprised i'm spending a something good happens to give you advantage on that oh baller okay that's 21 yeah that'll hit try yeah, out your, so new, it, your new uh your new quarter staff now is sorry was that just to confirm, it's a D8 of... It's a D8 of regular bludgeoning damage. Yeah! All right, so that's going to be uh, eight points of uh, bludgeoning damage. Beautiful. So he's going to uh, do a big wide swing and then clock it, clock to the side of the face. Perfect. Um, and, then... and you can attack with that as well. Um, and then don't forget that you probably would have regenerated your key points on your rest. Yes. Uh, I'm going to hold on to them because I think yeah, you there's might something fucking... Yeah, and then I rolled a 19 on my martial arts attack, so... Uh, that is two hits, uh, so... It so was that's going to be another eight points of damage. Oh, beautiful. Let's that go. <laughs> feather -like quarter staff lashes out once, twice, and a shower of teeth and blood smash against the wall as you knock her priestly vestments from her head. Wow. wow. Hey. Great. <laughs> that's a good stick. Yeah. Uh, so that makes it to Alessandra next. It's Alessandra. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, go up to this goblin uh, and kind of square up beside uh, Carmilla and make her attack. Uh, that is going to be a 19 to hit. That'll hit. Give me damage. Yeah. And that's going to be uh, 10 points of slashing damage. A quick blade sends this acolyte to meet whoever he was praying to. Uh, and then she'll sit, like, square up and then go into tunnel fighting stance as a bonus action. Perfect. All right, down to the bottom of the initiative, we have Anthea. We're gonna move into the room. Can I? Yeah. We're gonna stand a little bit further back. Doink. And I will take a... I'm gonna do a fire bolt. Perfect. Make me an attack roll. Yeah. That's not gonna hit. Well, nope. <laughs> All right, does Squish do the same That's thing? That's okay. Yeah, he well, not a fire bolt, but he's gonna patoo. Here it comes the next one. Maybe. No, that uh, that's I'm gonna use my determination for him. What does that turn into? Eighteen. That's a hit. Roll me yeah. damage, Squish. Let's go! Why is Squish the MVP? I don't understand. <laughs> Kacha! Max damage! What the hell? Uh, on these, on these sharp point bloody dice. Yes. So, uh, six points, four damage. It's not blood, it's ooze. It's, ooze! Yeah. All right. Uh, so, how do you do it? <laughs> oh my god. Kill steal MVP over here. Um... <laughs> He's going to go up the nose because he's turning towards Sindri, probably. OK, uh, there is uh, basically the slime goes up the nose for a change and then yep. the back of the head explodes, <laughs> painting the wall with gore. And um, as you take a breath and look around to the south, one of the curtains is going to part on its own. And you hear the sound 
and then the other curtain is going to part. What do you do? We're going to stay in initiative right now. Top of the initiative. Carmilla. Scream? Uh, um, uh, the As the curtain parts, I think she's just going to like spin and lunge forward and just attack at whatever is making sound possibly okay. you, if she doesn't uh, see anything uh rushing into the room can you make me a perception roll for sure uh that's gonna be a 13 13 okay and i'm gonna spend a little more for that what's my story oh, and sorry it. did it did oh, it man. seem like the the curtains came out it did not. It seemed like something oh, okay. parted them. Like, basically, okay. like, picture so like a shower. she's stabbing, like, through the curtains. Gotcha. All right. So you stab through the curtains, and then yes. looking into the room itself, there is, there's nothing inside of the room. So you step forward, basically, like, into the, into the doorway there? Yeah, she won't step into the room yet. Um, she was the hoping room... to catch whatever it was. So as you slash through the empty uh, the empty curtain, you're going to see that this high, narrow hall looks like it might have been part of a chapel or shrine at one time. Angelic figures sculpted along the room's upper reaches overlook the floor. And um, between the archways here, um, leading, uh, leading into the room that you're in, you can see that there's a large brazier that is still, um, well, it, there's nothing in it. But there's a soft bit of slime along the ground. Like a small, just, deposit of it. I don't care for that. The, um, the west, or pardon me, the eastern wall is completely collapsed on one side, all the way down to a door leading into the east. But looking around the room, you see nothing inside of there. Um, that is going to be your turn. Lyric! Uh... Oh, do you do anything else? I was just going to turn back to, and I know we're still in combat rounds, but in character, she doesn't know that. Uh, she's going to turn back and, uh, and Thea, do you, would your, can you make your lights again? Uh-huh. So on your turn, but. <laughs> sorry, what did, sorry, what, what did you want? Uh, I was, I was meeting the fairy, the fairy lights. Oh, I cannot. I have no. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have any more potions of that on me. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Just be careful, everyone. Okay. As you are turning around and doing that, uh, what's your armor class? 18. I'm going to spend another for some more because I need this for myself. <laughs> There we, there it is, there it is. That oh, was no. that was not a nat twenty, but it was good. So as you as you hear um, her respond to that, um, you are going to hear this strange noise echo through the hallway, like, and then suddenly the rest of you are going to see long tentacles wrap around Carmilla's arms and legs and pull her back uh, into the room behind her, uh, Carmilla. Ah! Uh, looking behind you, there is a strange creature dangling from the ceiling, blending in with the common uh, stonework of this. It is an immense worm with a almost beak, like almost like a chicken beak in the center with four tentacles reaching off of it. It has you in its jaws. And, uh, and who's here, guys? Uh, it is going to pull you back into the room one step and your damage my friend is going to be uh, that is going to be tentacles that is uh, 2d6 plus that's going to be max damage 14 points of damage as these tentacles grab you and pull you back uh, and it is going to try to make a beak attack against you try to bite you here we go uh, and is not going to be able to. Uh, it slashes into you, pulls you back, and lifts you up into its maw. And as it does, uh, you are going to be able to wedge uh, the side of your blade in its beak. So it's like... <laughs> All right. Uh, Lyric, it is your initiative. Right. Okay. That's 
pretty terrible. Camilla! Um, and, uh, because I think Lyric is, like, entering the room as this was sort of happening, and, like, turns and sees her get pulled through. Um, and then is gonna run down through, I think, the curtains on the opposite side okay. to try and get a sense of what the heck is actually going on. Uh, I think we're going to about... This immense Five. chicken worm is hanging off the ceiling and has Carmilla grappled. What the fuck is that thing? <laughs> I always love it when players do that. I and, don't uh, know, but please kill it! Uh, okay! And I'm going to... Um, hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to shoot with my crossbow. All right, that seems like a really good idea. I'm going to use my inspiration you gave me earlier. Ooh. Because why not? That sounds great. Uh, that is a... 22 to hit. That is definitely going to hit. Roll me damage. Mm, not the greatest damage, not the worst. Uh, that is a... Eight piercing. Eight piercing. All right, aiming up. You're going to fire off a brilliant shot. Uh, it is going to slam into it, and its its tentacles are thick. The muscles that are working inside of there must be incredibly strong, like like a cow's tongue. Um, your mm -hmm. bolt is going to only punch in a portion as deep as you want it to. Ugh. But it still hurts it. I hate this thing. This is terrible. Um, and then I want to do also, with my bonus action, mm -hmm. cast Healing Word on Carmilla. That sounds great. <laughs> because. In our private chat, Krista's arguing it's more of a parrot beak. So, I don't know, it's a parrot worm. <laughs> Grick one of Carmilla. I hate, it, I hate it either way. Uh, so, I rolled that. So, I believe you should be taking, s I'm just doing seven. Oh, that's okay. great. So, I rolled and I add my spellcasting bonus. Okay, I'm going to spend a hurt the more to get, uh, to basically buy an action to take a lash at Lyric. Uh, that's not gonna miss. That's gonna miss, absolutely, unless Lyric's AC is 12. Thankfully it's 14, 12. which is not great, but... Okay, uh, it's going to lash out with one of its tentacles at you, almost catching the edge of you as you aim your bow at it, or aim your crossbow at it, I should say. Um, and it is Alessandra or Sindri. For dramatic effect, it will be uh, uh, Lady Alessandra running in next. Okay, sounds Carilla. good. Uh, and leave space for uh, Lathander or whoever, or whoever. Yep. Uh, and Oops. then... Uh, Go in for a sword attack. All right, um, let's do it. She does not. Okay, yep. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Is that a nat twenty? <laughs> Christine rolls. It's nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, that's gonna absolutely hit. It, yeah. So I will use smite now. Okay. It now is, we it do it. Yeah. So it's gonna be max damage on the 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 sword damage, and then oh, no. Okay, so that's what, 8, 10 with that, plus her strength, plus her smite? Yeah, so that's going to be 18 points of damage. Holy shit. Uh, yeah. Okay, that blow is resounding, and the explosion of light from her blade severs one of its face tentacles, dropping Carmilla onto the ground. And then, just... Just up and over? Yep, yeah, just kind of in 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 Carmilla's space perfect all right Alessandra this thing is like thrashing around damn near killed what do you uh, do and... Sindri uh it's Sindri time uh so Sindri will uh go in the door that Lyric ran in because there's more space uh let me go 5 10 15 20 25 30 uh and then go in for his staff attack staff attack uh, that would be a 13, so that's probably a miss. Uh, it is going to be a miss. You do have determination, though. I will spend determination for 15. You never, you never know. Um, yeah. all right, that's gonna, strangely, that is going to be a, uh, a hit. 
and that is max damage on this dice. Okay, cool. Holy I like this crap. dice. Uh, that'll, so that'll be 12 damage, uh, or 12 bludgeoning damage. Okay, um, as you whack it with your stick, you rip it off the ceiling and slam it to the floor. How do you do it? Oh, uh, I will like p use the tip of the quarterstaff to pick up the brazier and just dump it onto the its beak and just kind of shovel it into it. All right. What the fuck is this thing? What the fuck is this thing? All right, it's going to stop moving as you crash it to the floor and and smash it over the head with a brazier. Um, and it is going to die. Uh, and Thea. She's going to run into the room after everybody else. Strange biology? Uh, right. Oh. Make me an I arcana think it's roll. dead. Oh, okay. Uh, or a nature roll, actually. Either would work for me. Good job. I think an octopus mm. fucked a parrot? Oh, that seems improbable. <laughs> um, sorry, did you say... <laughs> I got distracted now. Oh, did you say arcana or nature? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, if it's arcana, it would be an 18. Uh, if it's, it's a nature, it would be a 16. It's a grick. Oh, oh, I read about it in a... Oh, I don't know why I'm getting someone's accent. I read it about it in a book. Um... I think it's called a, a Grick. Ew. I just, it was like a picture book of G strange creatures. What? G is for Grick. Runs in with rocks and goes Wow. <laughs> when something that it wants to eat comes near it. So it, I, I suppose it chose I'm, you I'm as well its lunch. Aware. Yeah. I suppose I should be honored. I mean, I don't think it's particularly choosy, but yes, you, sh you should be quite honored. It seems like it wanted to have you as a snack. Mm-hmm. So are we sure there's a couple more of them? Yeah, I'm going to start staring at the ceiling. Um, I'm not sure if they hunt in packs or not. <gasps> so... Polly want a tentacle? Hello? Sindri, as you look down at the Grick, all of you are going to see that this thing died when Sindri sla slammed it to the floor and then threw the brazier on top of it, right? However, as you kind of pull the brazier back to take a better look at it, it died because underneath the pile of unlit coal in the brazier was a statue, a gold statue of an elf that is now embedded in the side of its head like an Oscar. Well, um, I suppose that also works. What you is think? it? Good job, Sindri. Lady Maybe. Alessandra will, will chime in and say, I think it's Lathander. Oh. Is that the, the material or the name? <laughs> no, that's the artist. <laughs> No, I think it's an I think it's an icon of the god. We should probably take that out of it. We could um, probably sell it. Yeah. Um, Once the Grix cleaned off of it. Sindri will mm, hold on, I have an idea. Ew. Sindri will go back and cut off a piece of like the priest robe <laughs> and use it to hold on, let me get some like Oh no, actually, here. I've got this. I've got this <laughs> prestidigitation. <laughs> it is clean. You now have a uh, an expensive gold statue um, at the bottom of the um, at the bottom of the brazier. You'll see that this thing was probably wrapped in red cloth, but it's soaked with Grick juice now. Is the cloth anything? Uh, no, nah, it's just it red cloth. Or... It looks like it was hidden down here, probably from other goblins. Mm. You know how goblins be. Uh, can I can I quickly run back to the other room and just add it to our pile? Yeah, one hundred percent. Perfect. <laughs> Unless that anyone else really feels funny. like stabbing anybody with it, I don't know. I love this stashing things away. We'll get it on the way out. <laughs> so good. Uh, did, was there anything on like the priest and the goblins in the altar room? 
actually, yes. If you head back, you'll be able to see um, a quick look around. Uh, says that the sensor and the chalice are art objects worth uh, probably quite a bit. Both of them are solid gold with inlaid pearl. Or, Sorry? <laughs> yeah. They were pillaged wow. for sure. Um, just to save myself time later, uh, the chalice is worth 180 gold. And the um, the sensor is worth 150. Just in case, so I don't have to bring this out later. Okay. Oh my god, I, I've got that written down. Remind me I have it on our, our loot list. That sounds good. Um, and as you are standing in the lower chamber, Carmilla, you're running back and forth. Um, Sindri, you're in the north one. In the lower chamber, you'll see that there, like I said before, there are angelic figures sculpted along the room's upper reaches. Lady Alessandra is going to take a look at them as well. Um, the chapel door um, as well has these reliefs carved on it. Does anybody want to make me a religion roll? I'll do my best. Oh my god. Lady Alessandra, I rolled for you, Chris, for, for covering her. I rolled a two. She, yeah! So yeah. I rolled a one, but I'm a halfling. <laughs> oh! Hey! I rolled a 13. Probably Perfect. also take a look around. Please do. That's a 14. Wait, what? Int? No, that should... Nah. No, sorry, that mm -hmm. should be a 16. Nice. It'd be very 12. funny if Sindri knew this, so let me take a take a shot at it just for comedy's sake. That's a uh, sixteen. Sounds good. Um, all right. Nineteen. So yeah. Everyone but the paladin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everybody but the paladin oh, that's too funny. Uh, is going to uh, notice that the chapel's decor uh, uh, lists what deities were once worshipped in this chapel. You recognize symbols of Ogma, the god of knowledge, Mistra, the god of magic and guys who eat shoes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> too much Baldur's Gate. Uh, Lathander, the god of dawn, and Timora, the goddess of luck. Cinder will put a, a silver down for in front of the shrine of Timora or like in, in a spot for her. Well, Alessander will turn and look at you all. We shouldn't be far from the Northeastern Tower. Are we all ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go get Gundren back. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah. she's going to clean the blood off her blade turn and prepare to go forward which is where I think we're going to call game for the night meaning that Christine nice. gets to be here for the fight <gasps> Yay! yes Yay. perfect all right good job everybody Christine we hope you're feeling better folks thank you so much for tuning into this episode of uh, Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk um, we're going to be headed right into next chapter at the end of this because it's going to be exciting uh, I'm very excited. Did you guys have some fun kicking some goblin ass and triggering all the traps? It went so much better this time. Vengeance. Hit points and we tactics. Did it. Yeah. I did that, yes. some stuff yeah. in combat, sort of. Uh, oh, my dude, you kept me And up. the little finishing move. Patoo, patoo. God damn, uh, MVP. <laughs> three. Three of the people. Three kills. <laughs> and they were all beside Sindri. <laughs> They were all fucking all of oh, them. <laughs> I'm fine with it. As long as I don't get another round of combat against me, that's great. Uh, yeah, exactly, right? I would so yeah. make, sure, like make sure to look up all the rules involving monk weapons and flurry of blows to make sure that we're doing it 100% right. But that staff is a game changer for you. Yeah. So I was looking I was looking at flurry of blows and it's like you get to make an unarmed attack at, after your uh your monk attacks. Mm -hmm. So like you can do flurry of blows with the weapon. Mm -hmm. But your uh, wow! But your unarmed attack that you get from martial arts is always going to be your unarmed dice dice roll. Okay. Yeah. So so basically, you get two d eight plus a d four at this level. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, that's it's really good. Wild. That's way better than a yeah, than a scimitar. Because you don't get uh, the d eight uh, dice damage until eleventh level for your monk weapons. 
Yeah. Yeah, staff is the way to go. This is oh, yeah. why this is why Donatello does machines, buddy. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, folks, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fandelver and Below. We love you very much. And if you want to show us how much you love us, no pressure or anything, parasocial connections being what they are, uh, consider checking us out over on patreon.com slash dorktales, where you get a ton of additional content, including an alien destroyer of worlds game, uh, Hunter the Vigil, uh old gods of appalachia technocracy zero sum panic at the radiant citadel and strixhaven and i i marvel i'm probably missing something but there's so much stuff over there go check it out right now and join the likes of our amazing producers like our divine producer uh my mom hi mom how's it going you don't watch this but i love you um and bob hey bob uh our demonic or devilish producer uh precarious who's not doing anything wrong ever i promise uh you can check him out on friday nights where he streams his own game uh the mrs makani over at twitch.tv slash precarious with several members of our channel uh you also um a big thank you out to uh our wizards of the patreon that would be the ink goblin tammy the forever cleric who i'm getting a vampire which is gonna be great uh they're very excited she's very excited to be learning new systems uh and uh to sorcerer sanguine our most recent uh magic type user uh and finally to our high council of the patreon which is taryn dustin amberthist raven with bobbles karasha urquhart chef ella death larouk mike baxter and Kelowna curd y'all are amazing and uh we'll be back uh tomorrow night with something um um, depending on how Christine's feeling for, for shards. And then we'll be back Wednesday night with Transylvania Chronicles episode one. We got a lot of stuff this week and I hope you enjoy it with us, but until then, good night, everybody. Bye.